Welcome to the Made to Parade podcast, sponsored by the British Drum Company, manufacturers of the Phantom, Regimental Series and Axial Parade drums that look amazing, sound amazing and feel amazing. Alrighty folks, welcome along to uh, another episode of the, the Made to Parade podcast. You're joining us on episode number five of season number five and absolutely delighted to be joined by a member of the, the Rothkool Protestant Boys. Logie, you're very welcome with us on the podcast, mate. Great to see you. Pleasure to be here, Clint. Fine, like? Yeah, definitely. All good. Um, it's been a, uh, an interesting road yeah, <laughs> to get here, hasn't it? So, okay. Um, Look, why don't we just kind of kick off with, you know, what we usually do here. Let's talk to me a wee bit about how you end up involved in the bond. What, what sparked that interest? Uh, no particular incident thing, Glenn. Just, I think it was in me, just from when I was, from I was born. So my earliest memory would be, my dad was in the clock for New Conkers. My uncle was in the Ralph Cool Kai. All my dad's best mates were all in the clock for New Conkers, all drunk in the clock for an arms. My dad done the door in the clock for an arms. So they would have had parties every other week and came to my house plenty and I remember maybe as young as two and three sitting down with a wee blue mug throat I had with a poker and a, and a rake drumming away and them and skipping me to do this and that and me just loving that and people watching me and that just got me sort of involved in it and then tortured my mum wanted to be a clock for a young conquer wasn't happening right okay so my dad was for it, but my mum wasn't having it. And she usually buckles, but she didn't buckle this time. She, she was saying, no, it's not happening, you're too young. So I touched lucky. at a big Orange community centre out the back of me. I was brought up in Ferna. Uh, you had Ferna, Ralph Fern, Ralph Cool, the three estates. And it was a big Orange community centre, a youth club out the back of me. Uh-huh. Uh, and I heard there was a band starting up. And I was only five or six. And I uh, started hearing them practice on a, a Monday night. And I started down there now myself and... Popped my head in the door and heard of, who's that kid, who's that kid, oh that's Big Logie's son. Uh-huh. So they let me come in and they let me watch a practice and then it just sort of built from there and they surprised me one Saturday afternoon, uh, just sitting in the house on a Saturday morning. Uh, got a rap at the door, big fella called Jordy, Jordy Ferguson that ran the White Abbey uh-huh. Plaza Boys. The White Abbey would have been made up of sort of members from the CYC and the CAI, maybe a few local ones. At my door on a Saturday morning, and he asked me to go up the shankle with him. And I was flipped, me, he was so excited. <laughs> my mum came in, I got a wee dicky bow, white shirt, a pair of trousers. Uh, I went up the shankle, marched up the shankle road. It was like a holiday to me, I'd never been out of Ferna. <laughs> right. uh, walking up the shankle road, and I was playing a wee triangle, dancing up and down the ranks of symbol players following me. And I walked the way up to Woodville Park. I didn't know what Woodville Park was at this time, like, uh-huh. but walked up to Woodville, walked up to Woodville Park, place absolutely packed. I went third blood and thunder, and that was the the way Abbey's first trophy, and that was my, my earliest memories of, of getting in the bonds. Right, okay, dead on. So we, it was quite quick then. You we went from like drumming and messing about to actually out on prayer almost straight away. Is yeah, that is as that I say, right? Yeah? It just sort of it took over me. You no, know, I wanted to be involved in everything with the bond. And as I say, when I was going around there practice, my mum and dad knew it was just busting like it into the bond. Uh-huh. And I was always destined to be in the clock for young conquerors. That was. Mm-hmm. That was my dream from a very young sure. age, before I knew what the clock firm were all about, right, so okay. just a kid, uh, and uh, all my father's mates, I say, were in them, uh-huh. they all drunk the clock firm, they were a big part of the band, my dad was never was never a big part of his life or anything, right, okay. he, just, he walked behind the band carrying uh-huh. a spur drum, him and a big man Trevor McCall, so it was never, my two brothers weren't in it, so there was never no band history, had a lot of Orange Order history in the family, right. but not no band history, so uh, getting involved in them was, was absolutely brilliant for me. And then it was it was like Ferna boys and White Abbey boys, and a lot of White Abbey boys were from White Abbey. No, it wasn't called White Abbey Protestant boys just for the name. There was a lot of boys actually from White Abbey. Sure. Brought up amongst Catholics. My father was brought up in White Abbey. No, it was a mix. It was one of the mixed areas uh-huh. about our way. Uh, and getting in them was brilliant. And then a couple of guys from Rothcool started joining, younger ones. Three in particular for me was Jose, who's in the Fives and Drums, Wayne Kerr. Uh, and Freddie Truesdale. Right, okay. So when they joined, I started knocking about women's uh-huh. and I started to get a real feel for wanting to learn stuff and Jose picked the food up, taught me a flute and I built from there, I wanted to learn a drum and then started going to parades with women's. I was only about nine or ten. Uh, started getting involved in all our bands, with all our favourite bands and then I, I took a real sort of feel for a melody band, melody music. Uh-huh. Jose was sort of into that far uh, more yeah, and that yeah. sort of uh-huh. led me to it and he gave me the sharpshooters tape 
uh, and I started learning. This is after I learned the food. Well, Jose started learning that big year, and then uh-huh. I sort of knew that I was picking the food up very, very easily. So I walked in the right away on the flute. Not for very long. I went for, from the triangle, the symbols, to the bomb pole. Right okay. away, that way was all, all good memories, uh-huh. all sort of quiet memories, bus memories. Uh, uh-huh. One in particular is when I knew that you no know, bonds meant a lot to me. My dad was a, a scary man. And it was more scary with his mouth. No, he would never ever had to lift his hand to me. It was right. all, he'd done it all with his mouth growing up. I mean, I'm with two brothers. The one of them ones got up the stairs. I'll be up in half an hour to beat the crap out of you. And never went in. No, you're just sitting up there waiting. <laughs> but we, I'd get suspended from school on a Monday afternoon. And the bomb was out in Balamina on the Saturday. And I'd never been Balamina. I'd never even heard of Balamina. Uh-huh. So I was, oh, I was so looking forward to it. And then I got suspended. And my dad says, you're, you're not going to be a bomb, sorry. And I, all week, I just couldn't get it out of my head. Mm. So I knew my dad was going out on the Saturday afternoon, and I'll be him away at one or two in the morning. Right. So it run through my head all week. Do I just get on this bus? No, I, do I say nothing? <laughs> right. And just go? So I knew my mum wouldn't do either. Like, uh-huh. So I played my mind all week, and I got this Saturday, and I did. I just said, you know what? I ain't getting my uniform on, I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> and I'm just going to jump on the bus. <laughs> <laughs> not say anything to any bomb member, not say anything to because all a lot of ones in the, se- the senior way that we were all scared uh, about that. Right, like, okay. If I'd have told them that I went, get me off your head going. So I jumped on the bus, mate, and went up to Palomina, and I swear, I went round the whole way, told them my junior mate's pole, and I couldn't get out of my head what my dad was going to be like or what my dad was going to do when I got home. <laughs> and I walked the whole way around, and to be honest, I couldn't even enjoy it because I was that worried when I got home. And I've seen when I got home, my dad got on that bus, and he <laughs> read that bus out, man. I swear, I bolted bam, there's my leaving me to it. I bolted bam, away I went back into the house, man. Oh, dear. Oh, so that's when I knew. No, see if I'm willing right. to go against my dad here and yeah. do that. This means something the to me. Of, yep. The love of Very good. Was, was for me. And how long were you in White Abbey then? I was in White Abbey from 1983, I was about six then, till I was about 13. Right, okay. So, but, but the time so I'd left, then? By the time I'd left the White Abbey, I'd become accomplished on the flute and drum. So that was all to do with Jose away and Karen Freddy mm. Truesdale. And they were so, Jose's the best fitter I've ever met. He taught me uh-huh. everything he knows. Well, not everything he knows, but he, he <laughs> taught me everything I know. Uh, we and Kerr was a drummer and a fitter. Freddie was just a, a fitter alone. But the, you know, the, the feeling were just bomb mad. And that just, me, I just used to tail behind them. They were mm-hmm. a brave few years older than me. And uh, I just used to tail behind them. And everywhere they went, I used to go. And uh, that stuff. just gave me a real, a real good start with bands, having them three. Yeah teaching me before I went into my bond life. Because right. back then, though, I was only so five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Yeah, I, yeah. I knew nothing about life. Uh-huh. I was just learning about life, just learning about bonds. Knew nothing about bond culture. Sure. You know, I'd been in the Junior Orange, learning a wee bit about Orange history. Mm-hmm. But I uh, hadn't really learned anything else, to be fair. Dead on. And did Hosey leave where are we to go to the sharpshooters? Because I know he was a member of the sharpshooters Hosey, for... A period of time. That that absolutely broke my heart. So right. I, I mean, I, I cried my eyes out when that happened. Okay. Honestly. And I, it got wind. He was. I knew. You know, we were we were going to parades and we were following the sharpshooters. So right. I knew he, how he felt about him. I knew he was close to a few boys in them, and I knew he was that talented that he could, he could go anywhere. So it got wind that him and both Wayne were going to the sharpshooters, and I took it to my dad and. But dad just wouldn't let me go. And right, okay. No, I'm glad he didn't let me go because mm. it was always a city. It was always destined to be on the clock fern. But at that stage, I was really into melody. Uh-huh. And listening to Sharpshooter's tape had switched my mind in music. Right, so okay. It had, so I'd go from just playing ordinary tunes, ordinary drumming, and that introduced a, a different thought in my head. Yeah. And sort of expanded expanded me in, in music. Sure, yeah. Later on, when I'll tell you when we get to the clock fern, I, I came close to joining the Don Busters League. Very, right, very, okay. very close. <laughs> okay. Actually, I had one of the practices. Right. So it did, so uh, that was my White Abbey days, mate, and I wouldn't change them for the world because they gave me such such a good first band and such good people. They, you know, but it's good to get that, you know, that first experience, you know, and obviously, yeah. you know, with a desire to be part of a band, you know, obviously it's, it's had a lot of, you know, helped you form your opinions of what bonds should be like and what you expect from members and all that kind of stuff, and I'm sure we'll get into a wee bit of that later on as well. So... I'm guessing then that from White Abbey you end up living the dream and went to Clough I can't remember exactly <clears throat> what time or when my mum started to, to turn. I think when I joined secondary school, 
And I think I was a lot older than, than what I should have been, to be fair. No, and I think mm-hmm. that was a lot to do with bonds as well, right, being okay. around older people yeah. and stuff, and knowing things you maybe shouldn't know from a young age, you right. know what I mean? So I think it started to change when I got to secondary school, and then I was starting to knock about with boys. And sure. I, was, yeah, I was brought up in the club for now. I was in there playing pool, playing snooker. So I said, my dad done the door, my mum was a manager, and then when she wasn't a manager, she worked behind the bar. So I was in there sort of four, five, six days, or four or five days a week. Uh-huh. Uh, and then being around all the ones that were in the clock for, and I started knocking about with our kids. Uh, it was only a matter of time, and I can't remember the exact time, but it was a, a guy called uh, Ken Bankhead. Right. I think he actually he was the one that came to me and says, Ready, you coming? And then I just went up to practice, and, and that was it. I got, I got into right. them from men. And what was it like then? When oh, obviously, was, you know, you've had, oh, I want to be part of this here. Different. Right. Completely and utterly different. No. In what way was it different from every, where every way? Way. No, already I had built. Huge respect for these guys because I was 13 now and I knew a hell of a lot, as I said, and probably than I shouldn't. And uh, I had a hell of respect for these guys. Looked at them as my uncles, spent a lot of time sure. around them. So when I got there, it was more the senior boys kept themselves in the back room, uh-huh. sort of running the band. And then you had another level of, say, Big Favour, Michael Page, and then you had the younger level of me, Crooksey, young Dodo McRae. So there was a couple of levels. The senior ones, no, they made every decision. We had to take everything to right, them. Okay. So that was all new to me. No, I hadn't seen anything. Right. Like that it was a, a sort of family run band, might I be? Uh-huh. we all sort of done things together, right. but there was no sort of level, levels in the CYC. And uh, straight away, you know, the, the respect I had for these guys just sort of sort of grew, started growing straight away. And it was pretty much out. If I joined, if I joined on a Sunday night, it was pretty much out the following week. Right, okay. Uh, and walking, just walking out with them was completely different from walking with Abbey. No, Wade Abbey was absolutely amazing. As I say, I wouldn't change a single thing. But being in the, the clock fern, no, my shoulders went out. Right, no, okay. Rightly or wrongly, no, my, uh-huh. my shoulders went out. And you, you, you were an aura, an aura about us. And as I say, no, men that were well respected right throughout the area run the band and everybody respected the band. Uh, musically, at the time when I joined, they were sort of just starting to get better. <coughs> okay. The boys I mentioned earlier, below below the senior boys, were making huge efforts to, to change the, the way of the band, the way they were playing, the drumming. Uh, and then I started walking with them. I can't I, I can't actually remember my first my first parade with uh-huh. CYC. So I can't. But uh, I sort of walked on the flute straight away. Right, okay. And then I went to the bass drum after that. By the time I was about 16, but I sort of always sort of stayed on the flute. I would have been out every weekend. Uh South Belfast Young Congress, they were probably, in my opinion, probably the best band in the country then. We're all blood and thunder. Mm-hmm. And we sort of, we wouldn't admit it, like, but we would have spared right, the okay. K.A. Gammons. <laughs> and me and Dodo, me and young Dodo would have followed them everywhere. You know, when we were finished, sneak off, right, we're South Belfast, right, okay. we would follow them. And we'd have, uh, that's a bit of, sort of a big rivalry with them, which sort of built. But uh, a lot of good memories with Congress. We made a few... Uh, TV programs. Right. I remember one Saturday afternoon, the, uh, the, we were making a TV program, it was a false rat. And we had to go up and pretend we were ratting, and there was you no know, false peelers in the RCA, uh-huh. the big groups of them. And it says, right, when we blow a whistle, cameras were going on, you start ratting. Say like, ratting, and they thought it was real, they started busting the stuff. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I had to stop them, I had to stop them. Whoa, whoa, not that hard, not that hard. We made a couple of that right, okay. with CYC. Like, right. And yeah, one night, the, the, probably the, the most positive memory in the CYC would have been going to Prairie Mains uh, Parade, 127 bonds. Right. And we weren't no, weren't known for winning trophies. And South Belfast won all the trophies. We maybe picked up the odd one. But up 127 bonds, not bad, Nate. And all trophies were given out in the back of lorries back then. No. That's right. It was a good, trophy. Was a good trophy scene going, not the way uh-huh. it is now, or not the way it's been for us. Yeah. 10, 12 years might have been back on bonds, but mm. there was back in. Like, I know. The rave, some rivalries were maybe a wee bit nastier, but there was no I know, rivalries but it was, it was, it was interesting. I think it's one of the things that, you know, I always remember was, is that, that idea where someone had driven a lorry into the back of a, there's a car park um, at the end of the parade. There's a lorry there. Some dude's getting up with uh, this <laughs> little speaker and a uh. microphone and there's this thing on <laughs> and everything. And then, Call night and it was tables worth of absolute, you know, trophies well, everywhere. Trophies, some of the you trophies. Know, exactly, were, that's it. This I know. You, you like, got them and you <laughs> had to bring them back a following year. We were getting on the fo- we were getting on the house phone, Steve. Uh, uh, where, where's these trophies? trophies I know exactly. That was one of the things that I think always amazed me. Was like, how on earth did he 
these things make their way back yep. to these people most year after did, year. But most I know. Make it. There was the odd one, the odd category. Ah, the trophy didn't come back. There's no trophy. Just stay there and there. But, but that day we went up there and we went first blood and thunder with 127 pounds and the. It was such a shock. Uh-huh. We were all standing there, and all just watching, and waiting on the bus coming, or waiting to get on the bus. First ball in thunder, club for Neil Connors. What? So that was a, uh-huh. a massive, massive achievement for yeah. the band. No, I always when I had the start of memories I have of that time. You know, in early for me, early eighties, whenever I had been joined, I'd walked with Predator Raven at first, and going to these competitions all over the place. And what happened was, if we had won anything, we would have done a wee small walk after it and me and my wee mate Alvin we got out the front and put the flute away and we were just trying to you know, carry the trophies and everything <laughs> out, the, out the front absolutely loving it it was even better when it was in East Belfast I think you know, there was a parade there back then, yeah, come back to their own area and walk like, that's, that's something that. we've, ever, we've ever done as yeah. a band now but I remember the way that way used to switch their whole band after parade so we would have got off the bus at the top of Ferner Road and we had to put Front row, who were very, very young at the uh-huh, back, at the back, and right, give okay. one of them the whistle. Uh huh. Would have put me on the bass drum with the bass drummer strapping it to his back, and me walking right. behind him, beating <laughs> it. Would have put the youngest member on any tip, would have switched all the drummers. Right, okay. We would have done good. that in practice. We would have one bass drum in that corner, one bass right. drum in that corner, split the band, and had blowouts for about half an hour. <laughs> <laughs> no, you, they don't do them things like that. There's no, even with CYC, after every parade, back their clock fern. Walk in, walk in the clock for yeah, arms, yeah. the whole bar, cheering you on. That's it. You know, no. in, the, in the clock for me, I learned about, it was, as I say, in, in the way that way, I was just learning about life. Bonds, bonds have you know, formed a lot to do with my character. People have been around, formed a lot to do with my character, especially in the CYC, because you know, their chairman now was the chairman when I was there. Uh-huh. And he was like my uncle, my dad's best mate. And I also spent like 24 years with him at Rothfair and Rangers Football Club, so he's a big yeah. influence in my life. My mum, my dad, my granny are the three biggest influences in my life. Sure. But no, they're the people outside. My family who would influence okay. me the most. Big favour, I would have looked up to him in the CYC. So I was learning, nah, more about life. Uh-huh. More learning more about discipline. No, these boys didn't take any crap. So no, me, a, a cheeky young whippersnapper, no, if I needed a clipper in the air, I got a clipper <laughs> in the air. You were getting one. I wouldn't have got that in the way that way because we were all scared of my dad. No, <laughs> but it didn't matter in the CYT. You don't need a clipper in the air, you get a clipper in the air, Logie, and that's it. And it taught me, you know, it taught me a lot. No, I'm thankful to these boys for, for spending time with them and, and learning things. Mm-hmm. No, bad things learned as well. Sure. No, but you, you, uh, you learn from the good and you, you try to forget the bad. Or yeah. You learn from the bad and you try to carry on the good. Definitely. I know, the, the, I know when, when we had Leo on, and he, uh, on the podcast, and he was saying that, you know, obviously the, the chairman has the final say. Even even now, if they're, if they're stuck on a decision, it's it's up to this guy. Uh, so, listen, this is the way, you know, the way we'll that's go. That's probably about, it. Was, when I was, and it was Dodo and his brother, Jackie McRae, uh-huh. and Joe English, them three would have been Joe English would, and Dodo and Jackie would have run the band. Yeah. And then, as I said, the levels beneath them. So, but I know he. He's run the band for, for so many years, and I, guess I think Dodo's 70. Right, okay. You know, he looks about yeah. 60, that's what he does, <laughs> but I think he's about 70. That's a hanging out with all the young lads in the band to keep you young. Uh, I know, well, Lee, Lee's a, a great friend of mine. I have a, a lot of respect for Lee. I've known Lee. Lee lived beside me when he was a young boy, right two doors up from uh-huh. me. And I remember him, Lee coming to me when he was 14, getting involved, when I wasn't in the CYC uh-huh. anymore, getting involved and writing tunes out. And, Get you face bond captain. I think he got yeah. very, very young. Right, okay. Just same as me in the CYC. I got face bond captain very, very young. Michael Peters was my bond captain in, right. in the CYC who ended up in the, in the RPB with me. But uh, Lee, uh, Lee would have come to my house and asked me to read tunes out for him and, and took aye. him up to the CYC. Me and Lee went back a long way. He's progressed rightly, has he? Oh, I know, definitely. And the relationship between our two bonds, the, the Rothcourt and Protestant boys, and, and the Clock Fern has progressed greatly in, in the last sort of five years. Where yeah. Real good relationship now. So, uh, Brilliant. <laughs> so you'd have been part of the Clawford. You mentioned a wee bit before about that they were starting to make a change because the Clawfords went through a, f- a couple of transitions. Have now, they're making progress, and then it's almost like th- they went I back. Think, and they I took a step back. Think that's it. And then I went forward what again. Yeah. The goal, the goal they got, and then they go down, and then the goal they got, and then they go down. That's where it was when I was there as well. And it was nobody's fault. No, it was, it was nothing in particular. We put great efforts, and we made a cracking CD. I think he called it Loud and Proud. And that was sort of the, the first show of his, his change in tunes, sure. change in drumming. And I remember I was making it in Michael Page's living room on a Sunday afternoon. It was about nine or ten of us making it in his living room. And we'd made great changes then, a, a, a small a small group of us, and then the rest of the band was buying into it. And the senior senior boys was letting us tear away yeah, at doing it. Away, yeah, and then I think, Glenn, it's just 
the usual. No practice numbers go down. People t- stop going to parade. Mm. No, maybe the the four lavery months. Everybody's there, yeah, and yeah. the, the the months over the winter and all they weren't coming. Like 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 most bands, no. What's well, it's, it's the ebb and flow, isn't it? The ebb and flow of life. And sometimes life's changed so much, and I know we'll probably get into a wee bit of that this later on as well. But you know, where I remember whenever I started walking up first, I mean, it was like I'd have been on practice a Thursday night, out on a Friday night, twice on a Saturday, probably out on a Sunday, plus this practice on a Sunday. And your whole weekend from sort of Friday right through, you know, was 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 the bond. Yep. And it's different now, you know, people just well, don't I have just, that I time. Just wait. I just couldn't wait from, from practice to free. Practice <laughs> to free. That was just me. Yeah. You know? I just no, it's in you, it's in you. That's, I know. that's the way I know. It's, it is one of the things. <laughs> I remember whenever I, I went to my first practice, and, uh, and then at the end of it, and one of, one of the wee lads, we have on, and he says to me, he says, I'll see you on Sunday. And I was like, oh, I get to do this twice a week. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's great. No, even having my son in the bomb of me now, from, from the first day this, the Rothkoop Pros and Boys was formed, the now he's been there from day one. It's been, I didn't walk on the clock for him and my dad, so right, okay. I'd love to have done that, even right. though he didn't play an instrument, just sure, to say no, I just the bond together. But no, it, he's, he's got to do it with me, which is absolutely fantastic. Brilliant. Good job. So where does Rothkoop Pros and Boys come into the story hey, here? What happened with Clock Fern? Well, me was I met a girl. I had a child, very young, twenty, right. uh, and that just sort of other things sort of mm, started happening in my life, change, and, yeah. uh, and I can't remember any particular moment or anything, and never fell out with anybody. Had great relationships, still mates with boys. Was in the clock for uh-huh. with all them years now, so it was nothing but particular. I just sort of sort of left and, and went on to being a family man. And, Still was with all these boys yeah, yeah, everywhere yeah. weekend, no, uh-huh. but just wasn't in the band. But I went to uh, being a sort of part time band, but one would have called the Parade of Primark. Right. Colors, okay. Color t shirts, black trousers, four or five parades a year. Excuse me. That would have been more people from the original White Abbey band that was right, in. Okay. <clears throat> so the White Abbey band had progressed the uh, different things and maybe. Different areas. A lot of Carrick boys joined the White Abbey Band. It was still a great wee band. They were going to progress through different uniforms. And then I think Carrick ones like the Davy Milligan, uh, oh, three yeah. hours went uh-huh. and they started the Grands. Oh, yeah. I think that few boys from there went to start the Grands. And then I think a lot of Ralph Cool boys joined the White Abbey. I think they started carrying, carrying standards for third, third bat. Sure. So, and, and I think it just, the band just sort of fizzled out. Mm-hmm. So a lot of their original members. We all got in contact with each other and says, why don't we go on a wee part-time band? And I says, uh-huh. right, well, that'll do me at the minute. Yeah, yeah. And I was going to a few parades a year. It wasn't, this was probably the the period in my life where it wasn't, no, it wasn't brainwashed so bands. So bond head, I? Uh, so for, <laughs> okay. for a few years, no. Aye. I was just, now, don't get me wrong, I have to be honest, that not one day it would go by, I wouldn't lift a flute. Right. No, so, Still inside there the house, that, yeah. it was, mm-hmm. I was absolutely, you know, my wife would tell you, absolutely mental with bands, but just wasn't in one, full-time. Uh few years after, maybe so 12 years ago, maybe about a break of about seven, eight years. Right, okay. Uh, and I was walking through Shorts. I worked in Shorts for 20 years, and a couple of boys was in the clock firm with work, Guy Money. His father and my father were, were great mates. Uh, just walking through the main, main factory one day, and he was walking by. Very Gary, what's happening? Here, uh, we're starting a wee bond. He says, right, what, what sort of bond? He says, no, we're going to full run Thunder Bomb. We're going to try and be as best we possibly can, but we want to be a wee family band. And mm-hmm. I said, sounds great. Uh, what's happening? First meeting, Ross Park Community Centre, whatever it was, a couple of weeks' uh-huh. time. So I went home. Uh, my wee lad hadn't really been in the bonds or right. anything. Took yeah. me a couple of parades. Uh-huh. Wasn't but nothing like me. So I went home, said, my wee lad, right, you want to go down wee bomb with me? We were going to... St- Boys are starting a bomb. He says, all right, we'll go down. He was about 10 then. Right, okay. And I uh, we went down, there was about 25 people there. Maybe 25, 30 people there. And we had a wee meeting and we talked about what we were going to do and what it was going to be. And then he sat and we were in a committee and turned on. I'd done a brave bit of talking all night. And it's mainly the, the boys that were right. the, the moment we're, we're organised. No, the ones from the CYC, me, Pfeiffer, Gary, we were the ones that were doing all the right, talking. Okay. So the four founder members, sorry, were, were Pfeiffer, Michael Page, Gary, and Lee McCord. Right. Lee McCord would have been the one that would have 
do most of the money and bought stuff, got a right. got us on the road. And uh, they ended up meeting the wee man I, I hadn't met before. He was only 16 or something. We lad Ram Murray he ended up playing the bass drum. League tip at the start, he was. I'm um, very, very close to him now. Like, he actually asked me to be his best man as well. And he's okay, only a young yeah. kid. Like, but uh, he stood across the room. He says, To our man, he says, I think it should be him over there. He hasn't shut up all night. So, <laughs> so I was voted in as the first term on. And Favour was band captain. And most, most of the founding members were the committee. Uh-huh. So from then, I have to say, straight away, it was it was different than anything I'd ever done. Right, okay. Even, even them first years. You know, right. This was special. It was, right. it was special. I don't know why it was. A lot of, a lot of things. You no, know, my son being there for a mm-hmm. start. These guys... Although they'd been great mates and I'd looked up to Pfeiffer in my uh-huh. younger days, I hadn't really seen these guys for, for years. Right, you know okay, I mean? So yeah. if I'd walk by store on the street with a, with a hug and high five uh-huh. and stuff, but no, there wouldn't be much. So, I, so maybe it was being back with these guys that I'd spent my youth with and right. bringing memories back of, of the clock fern. But it was completely different and the families were involved. Every bus run, the waves were. And my wife has never been there. She, she right, doesn't okay. bother that stuff. She goes to... The do's and right, okay. I sit in the house. Right. I, don't, I don't drink. I haven't drunk in about fifteen years, Glenn. Right. So I haven't. But she loves that side of it. Uh-huh. Where my wee girl, she loves that side of it. Uh, she goes where mum and all. She says her. But at the start, no, that's the way it was. Family or family, so family orientated. So much fun. And don't get me wrong, we were we were decent. We were yeah. all good bonds, uh-huh. man. No, but but some cracking young kids back then, even. With right. some cracking young kids at the, in the very first of the band. Mm-hmm. Uh, we ran, as I says, with Lee Tip, with, with Dwayne, with we Craig Murray, Ryan's brother, who's still Lee Tip in the band now. Sure. Uh, with a good base as the older members, with about, I would say, about 13 ex CYC members. Right, okay. Also, the good, the good group of us. It's a good new core. Tour, new right. tour yeah. Don't get me wrong. I would say all of us had, were basically the same people we were back then. None of our traits uh-huh. and seniors, were, our personalities were the same. And everybody knew how everybody was. And for them first two years, absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. Right, okay. Uh, our first parade, Margaret Hill. We spent... We spent what a parade to start off oh, with I mean, there, though, my goodness. I, I never expressed anything <laughs> in my life. But we spent about eight months, really hard work, really, uh-huh. really hard practice. And as I say, then the practice numbers were great. Knew everything was yeah. new, everybody was there. And we sat down and we, we voted on the, on the name. Uh... And I was the only one in the room that, that voted against Ralph Cloud Pros and the boys. Right. Just, okay. I didn't, I, I was, you you can take bother. the boy out of CYC, <laughs> eh? <laughs> it was only Butler, man. Because I was with me, I was with young Ralph Fern and Ralph, Ralph Fern and Ralph Cloud always to feed each other and all the young groups. So I was only Butler, like, but we voted on the uniform with the white and turquoise or green khaki sort of, you know, the you know, old sort world of old, wars kind of thing, yeah. Well. Thing. So I think that was the, we voted for the, the turquoise. Uh, and then we built from there. We had about eight months of good, real hard practice. We learned about 20 tunes, just tunes that all mm-hmm. our bands were playing. Sure. Get us on the road, we're playing them well. And then we went to Market Hill. Uh, what a neat, uh, flip me, mate. See the build up. No one has to say, it's it just, I just hadn't had these feelings in band before. Mm-hmm. No, no, as I say, no, mate, I can, the feelings I had in the clock firm were, were absolutely unbelievable, but this was just different. Something else. Just yeah. different, mate. Mm-hmm. Just different. And I can't explain. The difference, but it, it was just different. And I went down to Margaret Hall. I was on the bass drum, but then and I think I went down about 13 flutes, seven drums, two bass drummers, and with a, a real crack and colour party back right, then. Okay. Michael Page had, had spent uh, the whole eight months training eight, seven or eight boys on the colour party. And he'd absolutely never carried a flag or a march right. their and see by the time they got that first out, and they'd done absolutely burning. And we're walking down, proud as punch and broids so, with. Uh, from Durg and everybody's, oh, all here. everybody's buzzing and we walk back up and down the hill and the crowd at the end there are no I'd never experienced anything like this 10,000 people there 127 bonds or something yeah. 120 bonds I'd never experienced anything like that before in the whole yeah, 30, 30 odd years of bonds I, mean, I, I know I've that, that parade is something else it's <laughs> one of those parades where if you haven't been at it or you haven't seen it it's like it, it is something else and I remember the one of the guys who's connected to the, the podcast with the sponsors British Drum Company the Stu Warmington ex-Royal Marine that was his first introduction to the bond scene here yep. was uh, a, a, a friend of his over here took him to Market Hill and he was like kind of going how the hell do people not know about this oh, because this is unbelievable I, I used to hide this hate from me for 30 <laughs> years no I've been in bonds yeah. most of my life and I never even knew this uh-huh. existed but there, so there from then we uh, 
just on a steady, steady climb up. We started bringing other tunes. Mm-hmm. We uh, go out every week. We had uh, stuck full time band. As I say, the family, the family members were on the buses. The buses were absolutely great crack. Well, that was two thousand and ten, I think. Two thousand and eleven was something similar. Maybe even a wee bit. Right. Okay. Maybe even a wee bit up the slope again. Uh, everybody's still buzzing. Everybody's still going to parade. Everybody's still going to practice. Yeah. We were starting the second year. I think we'd done a brief few more parades, and we were starting to know sort of Friday and Saturday. Yeah. You no, know, maybe Saturday lunchtime, Saturday afternoon. Saturday night. Uh, and then at the end of that year, that's when you know, cracks started to appear. People weren't coming to practice. Right. Okay. People weren't coming to parade, and it was annoying. You no, know, sort of the committee. Some of the both founder members and all were taking it thick and all, and sort of affecting morale in the band and. People weren't coming, and it just sort of started taking a wee right, bit okay. of a game. Nothing major, no. Just sort of taking a wee. But you bit were of conscious a game. So that it was starting to make it. There was something different. There was something, some, some different was happening, and a few of the founder members had left. Uh, maybe a couple of founder members had left. Me, Sam, Gary, Megal, would have still been Lee. Were still there. Hank Pfeiffer had had left. He left for a few months and then came back, and then maybe one of the other founder members had left, and that sort of started right, okay. happening then. And, Maybe and no, that's, that's, nobody was there was no fallouts, there was no mm-hmm. fates, there was no nothing. That was just the two the first two year buzz sort of that sort that sort of started to disappear, like just like it wasn't well, it wasn't like it was okay. just for the first two years. It's sort of hard to explain, mm-hmm. but uh, when people weren't coming to practice and parade, that's when the crack started, right. and then uh, from then we had a wee downward spiral. Two thousand and that would have been two thousand. And eleven, right. two thousand and twelve, we got another couple of members back in. Okay, so we started going up a wee bit again, and then two thousand and thirteen, two thousand and twelve, I took band captain, I think, in two thousand and twelve. Th- at the end of two thousand and eleven, two thousand and twelve, I took band captain, and then we started to change right. a wee, few wee things, not sort of purposely, mm-hmm. just started, started writing out different tunes, started changing the drumming, say so started getting a few members in, and then I noticed how long we're. We're getting, we're getting somewhere here. We're again here, we're yeah. getting good. And then, as I say, the founder members that had left had come back, and the, the, the atmosphere and all was still great. Yeah. The, uh, it was just the dedication had sort of waned a bit. Okay. The dedication was back up. We started learning great tunes. But the thing was, we were doing too many parades. Right. So I think maybe about 60 we were doing. Jeez, right, okay. So maybe indoors and stuff. And mm-hmm. that... It starts so to take its toll, doesn't that, it? That, took, that did take a massive toll, mate. So, <clears throat> at the end of 2013, as I say, our plan, everything was, was brilliant. Our practices were great. Sometimes the numbers weren't great, but no practices were brilliant. We were knocking mm-hmm. out some great tunes. But I think people started getting pissed off with the amount of time they were having to put into the band. So we sat down at the end of that year, and we sort of decided, no, tail off a bit. Let's bring it down to 30 or 40. But... Some people had already made the decision, no, it's just too much. No, too we're much going to right, so okay. yeah. There again, we well, had a, a, a patch of losing a couple of members. Uh, playing ways, learning ways didn't really affect mm-hmm. us, but we sort of lost a few members and going through that year, we're just sort of steady. And then the end of that year, we got another couple of members back again from, from about three or four okay. years before. And getting into 2014, I think we learned about seven or eight cracking tunes and then that turned out to be our strongest year right okay up until maybe the last three years 2014 mm-hmm. I think we were walking with about 10 drums 15 16 flutes right and the, all the drummers I've had basically from they were about 11 years of age along with my son my son uh-huh. basically taught himself a drum in practice right just okay basically just lifted the sticks and went for it. And just taught himself so I've had about 7 or 8 a.m. from the world of Uh and grow right up in the band. So they're all like kids right. to me, and I treat them all like my son. See them outside the band. They ever need me, I'm the first one there. Uh, they had all got to the stage where they were becoming accomplished drummers. Right, okay. And the drum corps was actually, they were actually starting to look on camera and look at clips of the drum corps, and like, these wee lads were starting to get there now. Yeah. And a couple of trophies started to appear. Right, always the nice. Wee, the wee young lads absolutely loved it. Uh, it's never meant nothing to me. I absolutely love going home and reading comments on Roy's live feed, all our live feeds. I love that. I love people talking positive about us. But the young lads love love trophies. Mm-hmm. 
I uh, love getting an old trophy and they got the feel of it and I think that spurred them on in that year. They get right, to okay. practice, you know, they get to pray, they mm-hmm. learn more uh, and this, they just started going like that again. You know, when we started going quickly as time. Right, okay. So, so. we did and I realised, you no, know, I got Sloaner and I got Sam and I got Wally down and just says, no, no, we are. We're, we're starting to go. And is that where you started to make a transition into what you are today, is that where you feel that that really no, started? No, because we had a, an hour, right, okay. an hour, a bar bump in the road. There, there we were, as I say, going Berlin the whole way through that year, coming home watching the clips, and you were just going, what, flip me, we're playing absolutely Berlin here. And then 2015 would have probably been the same, but halfway through it, I don't know what, just people started to leave again. Right, okay. It just sort of hit had a brick wall again and don't get me wrong, the nucleus uh, the, oh, the ones that have been there okay. from, from from all them years were still there. But uh the founding members, I think a brave lot of them had, had left at this stage. Uh and only maybe about two or three only maybe about two or three left. Right, okay. There was. So the the founding members had all gone, the committee had all changed and it was just sort of me, Sam and Molly Main. So right. from about I would say from about 2013, 2012, it's basically been us, Steve. Right, okay. And I could never, and Stevie Sloan, I'd right. never done anything, anything in this bomb without them. No, right, no the ones that's been me and Sam the only ones that haven't left from, from the very first night. Okay. We've been there through through the bad, through the good. But at 2015, I think that sort of started to get a wee bit scary. Getting into 2016, we were uh, sitting with, couldn't even have a band to practice upstairs in the right. hall. We okay. Sitting downstairs in a small uh-huh. room, maybe with five flutes, two or three drums, a bass drummer. Sitting there going, this is grim. This is the first time that's ever happened where we right. got to that stage. And the first time where you were actually saying, well, what happens, mate? If I have to get the end of this year, I'm going to have to know what I'm do. I have to Never said we were going to fold, but no, you were starting to talk about these things. And it was getting to the stage where there was that little membership. And we just decided, you know what? No matter what happens, because even if we don't have to go out, we'll just keep going. Right, okay. We'll just keep going, and we'll see what happens. We'll go right through the, the bad time. We've had good times. I've just had <clears throat> two absolutely fantastic years. So now we're hitting a bad year, and this is the worst it's ever been. So let's just get through it and see what yeah. happens. Did you do something specific, though, to address that? Was there something that you used to say? I know you were saying there, listen, no matter what happens, we're sticking with this. Well, but was see, there something I'll else I'll you said? We probably lost a couple of the wee younger members as well. Not for long, but uh-huh. no, we, we started to lose members that we didn't think we were going to lose. Right. You know what I mean? And that's that started to be the scary thing because you were thinking these members were in it for a long haul. Right, okay. Now, they, they did come back, but at that, this time, you're thinking, if we're losing these Tempo members, no, we're in trouble here. Right, okay. But it, that didn't last long with them, to be fair. But probably the turning point would have been getting members from other places. Right, okay. And it wasn't anything we'd done. Uh, we changed girls, you no. Know, so right. we were all, and all of us, me included, were against girls getting into the band. You no, know, sure. rightly or wrongly, it was it was just the, th- the thought of a band. Yeah. What so was the change that for you? A guy in the band. So his girl, his young daughter, Alan, was following us everywhere, absolutely everywhere. She was in the parade of Hill of money and she was playing the flute. And I'd watch her out in the parade, mate, and I was looking at her to see if she was dummy or not. She was playing every single note. <laughs> this is in our band, and me. That means she was coming out with us. She was blasting away on the flute. And I just got to the stage where we said, Mum, we'll have a meeting about this and let her in. She was probably in the period she was in the band. Up there with me, Sam, Wally, Stoner. She's up there with the best right. members in the band. My wee lad, Craig, Ryan, Gary McKee. You know, these were all members that were there all the time. Uh, and she was she okay. was every bit as good as, right. as any of us. And that just changed their minds on it. Right. And then, girl colour party. That was a different matter. Right, okay. So there was a lot of argument and debating about this. Uh-huh. But it got to the stage where we didn't have a colour party. We hadn't had a colour party in Donkeys. And I'd heard all the bad things about girl, girl colour. And good things, mm-hmm. but I'd heard the bad things too. I don't know, starting maybe arguments here, starting this, starting that. So I just got the girls that wanted to join. Um, and I knew one of them, Hayley Crawford. She was sort of going to be the one that would run it. And I was great friends with her father. And she came and met me in Willie Main's kitchen, along with our girl, I think. And I just told her everything. You know, they be treated exactly the same as every single member in the band. They do exactly what they're told. Uh, and we brought them in, and she agreed to everything. Brought the girl colour party in, uh, and it was absolutely fantastic. It looked fantastic. Honestly, mate, it was the best 
for part from the first couple of years when we make with the color party and make the train uh-huh. it was the looking at the front of the bond no from the back of the bond looking at the front yeah, yeah. it was the best of bond that looked it was absolutely brilliant but it didn't last long with, with the girl color party so he only was basically the only one left and I'd become so close there you know, she's, she's like a daughter to me now and uh, I'd become so, so close there but we were trying to make something for her and we said the symbols she wanted yeah. the symbols and she started on the symbols learning the symbols so her coming to the band made another couple of fellas come to the band. Right. Drummers, Andy, Andy Gibney, another couple and a, and a fluter. And we slow, slowly started to build again. Uh-huh. Uh, that was what that would have been 2006, I think, 15, 16, right, roughly okay. around about that time. And then we started to see the practices sort of going up again. We started to see the members that I told you about lost that, that broke our hearts coming back. Okay. So again, we sit down and we say, right, we're turning the corner here, right? So let's just keep going. So then, Big Ian McFarland, we start, we start going out, we start playing a wee bit better, we start getting members, we start playing a wee bit better tunes, start learning a wee bit more. And then, Big Ian McFarland, Haley's boyfriend, bumped into him one night down in Shore Road in Nando and he said he wanted to come. And I says, Right, that's that's stupid, dead on with you, you go and sort of hang out with your band, you're in eye, and it's up mm-hmm. to you, you come down. And uh, he came down. And then another couple of people followed him. Right, okay. And we were getting, then people started getting in contact with me and that were in our bands in Sandy Row, East Belfast, and coming to the band and you know, started realising, hey, on, no, we're getting loads of people from our areas here. Uh-huh. And it just started getting different, mate. Just absolutely changing. Everything about it started to change and you knew you were coming in and there were real dedicated members you know, that were going right. to be there all the time. And the playing side of things, I had always made the drumming up. I was always teaching the fruiters. I was always I was playing the bass drum. Mm-hmm. Maybe going over things with a bass drummer. Uh, so my time was sort of in practice oh, was put everywhere. Yeah, uh-huh. And I maybe learning the tune down with flutes, having to send the drummers out, bring the drummers in, go up with the drummers, teach them. Don't get me wrong, my really tips were absolutely brilliant. But I made the drumming up and they helped me teach them. But uh Big Ian came in and I started to sort of know, no, this guy's on my level as as far as being mad in the head and right. bombs, you know, <laughs> okay. all day, every day, just uh-huh. thinking about bombs. I said, this guy's on the same level as me here. And uh, I knew that he was, he's very, very talented. Say drum, bass drum, flute, you know, he can play them all. The lot, yeah. Uh, and I started to sort of say to myself, I'm going to be able to use this guy here. And I still, because I was so close to Haley, I started sort of getting close to him yeah. straight away. Uh, me and him started making up drumming then. I was saying it to him, if it needed fancied up, he done that. Right. He was saying it to me if I needed to dumb down a wee bit because he could be a wee bit too fancy at times. Okay. Then we met somewhere in the middle and then it started getting to the stage where I could concentrate solely on the flutes. And listen, it, it affected him as a bass drummer because he was spending more time in practice as a say drummer. Right, okay. But he was he was that talented on the bass drum anyway that no, it didn't matter, but just stamina away is it uh-huh. maybe the fact because sure. he wasn't doing it in, in the practice. But I was able just to leave the drum corps in him and, and Craig's hands. And, and then another young lad, young Phil Abernathy, he came in from, I can't even remember the band he was in, Burnside. Right. Burnside, Sons of Ulster. He came in from them, great wee drummer, started missing nothing. My wee lad, he never misses nothing. So we started getting drummers that, that never missed a, a parade or a practice. Uh, and then I just started saying to myself, we can start up the tunes here. And I can concentrate down here. And you can concentrate up there. Uh, so it just kind of happened naturally. Then you did almost yeah, membership. No, yeah. no, mem- it's, it's it's membership. No, that's the most important thing in any bond. And I say every bond's different. No, every bond's aspirations are different. Yeah, we had no aspirations or targets. These these things just happen naturally. But the membership, I can I can read as many tunes out as I want. Uh-huh. I hear people saying Logie yes, Logie that. It's it's nothing to do with Logie. It's to do with every single member that's in that band. Mm-hmm. No, they're the ones who come to practice every single week and learn every single yeah. tune. Do everything I say because they must think it's for the good of a band and they know it's for the good of a band. Every decision I've ever made in a band is for 100% good of the band. It's not for Colin Logan. Colin Logan's got no egos. Or people might have an ego and maybe gets hurt and they throw a huff. If my ego gets hurt, I'll, I'll, I'll keep it in myself. Right, I'll carry okay. on. Or maybe sometimes I'll let it out, but I'll still <laughs> carry on. I'll take whatever decision. I would take whatever decisions no, put forward to me. There's sure. If boys in the band that when we're having meetings aren't scared to say no, 
knowing that we'll do it this way. Uh-huh. And if that's the right way, we go that way. It's as simple as that. But it all comes down to the membership. I started noticing the membership was just totally dedicated to the okay. cause. So from there, we started going like that. But Michael Page at the time had got cancer. Right. And Michael Page was one of the founding members. And Michael Page is a... Um, and my bond life especially is a, a, ma- a massive part. Because when I got the Congress, he brought me in the week circle, me, mm-hmm. Pfeiffer, Dodo, Krugsey. And we were all doing everything together. Him had brought me in, showing leadership. I was looking at him as bond captain, looking at his Pfeiffer as bond captain. Uh, and then he got cancer. And that had a, a big, massive you know, impact in the bond. So a lot of founding members had left maybe because the bomb was getting too serious or learning mm-hmm. too much and they didn't have the time to do that. So Michael passed away, sadly. Uh, and it hit the bomb like a you know, it hit the bomb like a train. So we went up and we played at Michael's house when he passed away for Aileen and the family. And the founding members come up and played in the bond. And after I went round and met them all. Uh Spent a few hours talking and aired a few things out. Uh, asked them all to come back for Michael. And we all come back. We got a flag made in Michael's name, got it presented to the bond. They all come back and everything was, was going great. But sort of under the pretense that we didn't learn as many tunes, we didn't do what we're doing, we didn't go out as much. So although it went brilliant for a year and a half, it sort of stalled where we where you were, were going, going. The progress that you were making. The yeah. progress we were making, right. it, it stalled. So in that first year, when they all come back, we only learned four tunes. Right. Every year before that, we probably learned easy, 12, 13, okay. every single right. season. Because we were trying to change our yeah. whole tune list. Yeah. So we're maybe 40 on up, but we're trying to get another 40 to, to let that 40 go. So, yep, we did stall. But I have to be honest, the, the plan, the, the numbers, the plan we have is absolutely fantastic. Right. The atmosphere was brilliant because you know, we all wanted to do it for Michael and we were all mm-hmm. sacrificing stuff, from, including me, because you know, me and my and Stevie Sloan, the, the guy that you know, nothing passes, no tune I rate, doesn't win the bomb without going to him. Right, okay. He, he's, for every single tune I've ever brought goes to him before it goes to the bomb. If, I don't think he's ever said no, maybe he said no to the table <laughs> or something like that, but it, it, it affected me and him. Uh-huh. And in fact, it likes a big Ian and Andy, a few drummers, because we, we want to learn. No, yeah. We're just people that... I go and play 20 tunes, I know how to practice, I go home in a bad That's just nothing to me. Right, it's, okay. it's, it's, we just used to learning, and we're just used to learning every single week, learning good tunes, learning new tunes, and it just stopped. Uh, so we were going to practice, and we were just going over tunes we already knew, and mm-hmm. sort of become stale, and then sort of different we opinions on different wee things started to creep in. Excuse me. And my my wee daughter who has Smith McGuinness syndrome, she uh, was going in for a Spain operation. Right. She had uh, scoliosis to Spain. It was bent 45 degrees. So she had to go in and get it straightened up. So I uh, sort of passed the ball over a big favour to her mom and uh-huh. just to look after it for a few weeks and the committee and run it until I got back. And uh, while I was away, I think the, the meetings at the end of practices were lasting longer than the, than the practice. practices. And right, okay. There was this and that, and just sort of. I think that's sort of when the, the sort of Ralph Cool ones and the ones that weren't from Ralph Cool and sort of maybe the founding members and maybe they wanted to go a certain way, they wanted to go yeah, another yeah. way. So when I come back, that bond, though, it's something I had to sort out, but they decided to cancel a parade for, a comp- for whatever reason. I can't remember what, whatever reason it was. And that. Uh, we got wind that some of the founding members were, were going to leave, so we decided to put a parade back on. Uh, and it got out to the members, and we had a big meeting about it. And we found out at that meeting that the, the members were leaving on the 12th. Right. So there was like four footers, maybe two drummers, uh, a bass drummer. So it was a good chunk. So that's when we started to sort of say, right, it's going to be big hit here okay so we got the 12th but we knew you know it was a couple of Aye. months in advance and, and honestly though there was no falling out we went and we had it all absolutely fantastic 12th together every single one of us it's the same mates with these guys 35 sure. years and I have favour I'll have a huge respect for it as the day of day you know, for certain incidents in my life uh, so at this stage we knew they were going and we knew it was going to be final so we had the plan 
So when you was said, right, we could have a, a bad period here where we're going to go down. We lost, we're losing maybe just under half of our food core. Right. So we knew it was going to be, and they were all good footers, mate. They were all good loud yeah. footers, so they were. And, and they were all, listen, they were all burning bomb hammers. Uh-huh. Never missed a thing. No, they made a, no, made a complaint. People made a complaint about how many times we were out, yeah. but they never missed. Yeah. Their dedication was absolutely top notch. Bomb members like me, their whole lives, no, this is what we were. We all yeah. brought up together, and we were all, it's all in us. Uh-huh. It's all in us. But they just decided that it, it was too much. No, they wanted maybe a, a band like the one that started, but it's the in a wee second. So they went away and they started the Billy Boys. Right, okay. Which was a more part time band. Mm-hmm. Old style tunes, soft top drums, and listen, great wee band. You know, people love them, the Red Wave yeah, yeah. drummers, they are a great wee band. But that suited them. And our band suited the ones that were left in our band. So we finally knew, you know, this is who we've got. Right. This is who they've got. No, so we'll carry on. Both of us carry on. We're both happy, you know, we'll stay mates and we'll carry on. So we touched lucky and being basically straight away. The footers come in, the cracking footers come in. Arn Crozer, Mark Waters, and Wiggles from Shankle Star. Mark was from Bally Clare, Arn was from Mackay, the Arn's talented be footer. All three of them were. And we got a couple of drummers in. Um, basically, nothing happened then, so we got the members that we lost basically in straight away. And we, because we'd, we'd lost Michael, we were deciding to go to a song. So uh, we'll tell you about that after, obviously. Aye. So from then, we just get tucked in the tunes, and we knew we weren't going to have a bad, we wasn't going to whack us because we got the members yeah. in to replace the ones that sure. left. And every bit as good as footers, and maybe not as maybe not as fully on delicate, maybe miss the odd parade. And well, we are to be fair. No, Wiggles and Wiggles would never miss a parade. So he was one you got, uh-huh. and he was just as dedicated. Arm Arn, Arn would be basically the same. So he would Mark would miss the odd parade, but as in stock stock sure. the flute, the flute, uh-huh. flute was was brilliant. And from then we just. Started going like that. Okay. And as I say, a big part was probably the symbols. No, and, and progressing on the on the sound of the band. Right, okay. No, if you'd have said this to me, mate, I used to bite the symbols underneath my legs, behind Aye. my back, above my head, <laughs> dancing everywhere. I never thought of anything all in the symbols. And see if I didn't finish the parade and the symbols were smashed to pieces with cracks, I hadn't had a good good right, day a good symbols. Yeah, yeah. But seeing we started to introduce some property with Haley, who absolutely come on, leaps and bounds, absolutely fantastic now. And Jim Dock, who came in, and our symbol department was absolutely burning. But we went out the week without them. And I'm telling you, you the band tell just the wasn't country. not the same. Mm. Just wasn't the same. So that that had a, a big effect. Yeah. Uh, and we sat down, get in, we knew get in their 10th anniversary. It was massive. Absolutely massive for us. Because I would say 90% of the people didn't think we'd get by two years. They'd right, never made 10. The 10. Okay. And I would say, honestly, there was probably a, a brave lot of people didn't want us to get to 10 mm. years and we wanted us to sure. be here for two or three years. Uh-huh. But we were getting there. And we knew we were getting there. So we started to make the tunes and the drumming. We were doing this every year. Now we're starting to make the tunes and drumming no better every single yeah, yeah. year. Just that one year where we stood still. Every year, year we were trying to make it better. Um, get into the 10th year... We had a plan of you know, bringing in 15 tunes, making them all as best as we possibly could, better than all ones, and more complicated. Uh, so that's what we've done. And when we were going to Balamoni one night, and I just happened to have the uh, committee in my car, and Michael, when Michael passed away, as I told you, we got the flag, and we decided he, he went to this song with Phil Hamilton a couple of times. He was a standard bear at the Men and Gates ceremony. Yeah. He went to his great grandfather's grave. We named the tune after him. I think it was Rafael Man, James Robinson. Uh, and he was absolutely amazed by the battlefields. And he wanted to go with a band. It was our plan to go for our 10th anniversary. Sure. So we decided as a committee. We thought it was too much to put on the band because it was costing like 600, 550 quid ahead the way we were going to do it for the four day food right, tour. Okay. So we said the five of us would go in his name. And we'd, we'd hire a car out just or a jeep, and we'd just go yeah. turn. Do we do it? Turn off your own It would have been the most craziest thing we'd ever done. I'm so glad it didn't happen because we'd have went, <laughs> went in the um, uh, uh, cemeteries, mate, and we wouldn't uh-huh. have had a clue so, where we were yeah, going, yeah. what we were doing. So we decided that anyway. Uh, and then it just started to build right. before we got there, 10th year. It started to build the psalm trip, and mm-hmm. next minute, 19 people were wanting to go, and I just decided, right, we're taking drums and flutes, and that's it. Uh, we're going to go as a band and we're going to do it as a proper band. 
So we just decided there and then to get everything booked and we still hadn't decided to take Phil Hamilton, but we're going to go as a band and still right. just go as ourselves. Right, see what happens, but it yeah. wasn't until sort of the last minute, maybe about four weeks beforehand, that I phoned Phil for an itinerary and me and Philip had brought up together. My, my mum and his mum used to drink together on Friday and Saturday night in the house. We were only a few few houses apart. And uh, he says, do you know what, Colin? I promise, Michael, I'll take your band. He says, I'm going to go. He says, I says, what? He says, I'm going to go. He says, I'm going to write you an itinerary and I'm going to go with you. And I says, mate, that's absolutely fantastic. Mm-hmm. So that was the, the start of the, tr- the Somme trip. And getting into the 10th year, we decided to sit down as a band because we had good numbers. Uh-huh. And we decided, right, we were sick of people holding us in the ransom right through the band's history. No, you couldn't throw them out because you throw them out, no, you're, you're in trouble. Uh-huh. So we we'll we'll decided to take a gamble and just say, right, me, Sam and Molly sat down, Lee McKee sat down, and we said, right, we're not taking no more. We're going to tell the band, if you want them as prayer, you want them as practice, you're going to get through out. And we did. We stuck to it, mate, and we threw the first person out. And every single other person in the band, from then till now, the dedication has been absolutely off the scale. Brilliant. It's been, honestly, you wouldn't believe the turnout of practice, you no. Know, most weeks I would get an 85% turnout of practice every uh, single week. Well, I can believe that, having set on a practice, like, you know, I mean... Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the only reason we're able to learn what we learn. No, when we come back from a psalm, get into the, the following year, we learned 18 tunes, right. all sort of based on the psalm, so we did. And, but that's what we did, get into the 10th year. And the 10th year, we had a few things planned, with the psalm trip planned, with the 10th anniversary ball planned in the Hilton Hotel. We were going to, from halfway through the year... Raise money for Hillcroft School, maybe girl. Right, yeah. Most day we special school up in Mosley, Hill, Hillcroft School. You call uh-huh. it. So we're, we're going to raise charity our money for it. And in that same year, I've, I just a wee thought back. The CYC raised about I think about ten eleven grand for cystic fibrosis. Right, okay. So in that year alone, we're on the positive side of balance, it no be a yeah yeah. No, we raised about 15, 20, 15, 20 grand of charity. Yeah, and I think that's one of the things that we talk a lot about on the podcast is about that charitable work. You know, and the amount of money the bonds raise every single year towards charity. I, you know, it's not that you're doing it to get noticed. I mean, that's not the reason behind why bonds do it. But it's one of the things that I think people overlook well, when I, it comes to the bonds is the amount of charitable work the they charitable do. The CYC, along with my father, in the last thirty-five years has raised about sixty grand. Yeah. And it's mostly down to the. I don't know because my dad's moved away to Scotland now right. 20 odd years but they've done this charity football darts pool thing on Boxing Day where it was his my dad's team against Dodo's team all my dad's mates from McClock and all Dodo's mates from Monkstown played football in the morning done pool done darts and they must have raised you no know, two or three grand every single year for okay. the last 40 years and I know Dodo does a lot a lot of charity work and has nothing for it doesn't yeah. get no credit for it yeah. you know, there's more people like to put their nose out no he doesn't the work yeah. he does for our community of birds is unbelievable no, and there's the a lot of young, work, lot of young sung heroes isn't there oh I mean we think we, t- we put in about eight, eight and a half grand or eight grand in Hillcroft school that year so we did but that year mate was so special and it started off just unbelievable so I knew it was just going to be everybody okay. was there everybody was buzzing we had a new uniform the, the turquoise yes. the turquoise jackets and it was the nicest uniform I've had so far and everybody was absolutely buzzing they knew the psalm trip was coming and the psalm trip being our, at the end no you could always use that no as we can practice <laughs> no, you'll, you'll, not, you'll not be here no yeah, yeah. Telling, yeah, you must be here you'll not be here and they, they all knew that and that year was just absolutely fantastic mate and we got our, our families involved no because I couldn't do this without any my family's mm. big, big part of this band no. sure the daughter, the son, the cousin, the stepbrother, the wife. You no, know, you have to have a good wife. You no, know, see when I dedicate so much time, mm. the band, and no, and, and there's nothing I've ever dedicated more in my life to than this band. You know, right. and that's just the way it is. Sure, I've never had feelings for anything the way I have this band and the people in it. I care so much for every single member. They're like, I'd say my mom, my dad, my, my wife, my kids. There's nothing means more. There's nothing more important to me in that bond. Okay. It's as simple as that. With two brothers, you know what I mean. There's nothing sure. more important to me, and it's this bond is so much different than any bond I've ever been in. It has so much, so much passion, so much in my heart that it's 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 unbelievable. And that's right from the very start, uh-huh. even through all the good and bad times, through all the different memberships. Yeah. It's just been like that. But in the last four years, I must say, it's just got deeper and deeper and deeper mm-hmm. and deeper because the membership have been so so 
in that show and they're making it better so and they're making it good so and they're making it fun they're keeping every all their fun, all the kids there's so many kids involved now with such good young membership we ran right Mackenzie all young drummers with a lot of young kids in the band now yeah. with a wee couple of wee young footers which I've never had before sure. because I never I never had time to put on them uh-huh. I was being told much, there was young kids maybe coming yeah. I was putting so much time in the Learning the flutes, learning the drums. I couldn't put any time on the young kids, and they're maybe leaving. Uh-huh. So we are trying to do that now. And we are trying to get the young kids involved, and most of the young kids are members in the band's kids. Right. So we're going to be there. We're not going to leave. Right, so we we'll yeah. have to get them over. Young wee, wee girl, young wee girl Morgan. She's at the Rangers Academy. No, she came come and play a flute. Now she's blowing her vein out. She's only right, thirteen. Okay. Wee girl Ma that. She's, her, her mum's torturing me to go to the indoors. She doesn't want to miss nothing. So, <laughs> so I need to get her on, on the instrument. She's absolutely, these kids are absolutely, it's, everything about it now, mate, is just fantastic. So you're growing your own legacy here? Uh, but that, uh, that year was just unbelievable. Unbelievable. That was that was our best year. No, the last two years have been better playing ways because right. we brought out better tunes. And mm-hmm. after the song, we uh, the tunes were so heartfelt that yeah, they were yeah. the best set of tunes we've ever sure. brought out. But that tenth year was the best year we've had, yeah. and then in a ball, which Roy was at, absolutely fantastic night. We ended up we, we, we got the sum total for the, the school. Uh-huh. We had a few teachers from Hillcroft School there, and we had an awards night and given out you know, the most dedicated, sure. player, most dedicated, and then over awards over ten years, ten year awards and stuff. Uh, and we were all dressed in eighties and our dicky bows and right. everything was all stayed up there. It was absolutely fantastic, absolutely brilliant. So that's how that year finished, and then. From that, the next year, we've just went like that. No, okay. So, so the let's the let's talk a wee bit about that because one of the things that you know, one of my real introduction to you guys as a band is what I consider to be one of the best Blood and Thunder CDs that's been released is is in Flanders Field. And I remember getting a hold of a copy of this. There was a bit of a buzz starting to happen about the band of whenever, whenever I came across the, that CD. And it started hearing your, the name of the band started to pop up quite a lot. And I was like hearing about the Rothkill Protestant Boys, Rothkill Protestant Boys. And I remember catching these a few times on, or catching these out a few times on parade and going... Right, his drumming's tight as good out here. Flute core's brilliant. And then I got a hold of the CD, and I think I called up to see one. Of, I think I, I contacted one of the guys on Facebook, and uh, it was well, it was Willie, wasn't it, Willie Man? Yeah, and uh, went up, and I got the CD, and I put it on as I was going home in the car. And as soon as I got home, I got back on to Facebook, the messenger to Willie, and I was saying like, "Going, what? Who is doing the tunes?" For the band, I says, well, because this CD is absolutely blowing me away. Like, for instance, that bagpipe bob and all for me was just like, oh my God, this is unbelievable. Bob was named after yeah, that's right, because he said so that, that to me, you know. So that was just simply his name was Bob and he uh-huh. loved playing the bagpipes. <laughs> so what, what we, what, what I sort of started doing was naming tunes after, first one I think was my, no, no my granny was the most important person in my life and I lost her. It, it killed me, like, but she was the first one that I sort of named the tune after. Uh-huh. Uh, and we just started doing that. You no, know, started naming tunes yeah. after different things, different people, things we'd lost, and they started meaning a wee bit more. So I started putting a wee bit more effort. Not that I wasn't putting yeah, put yeah. effort in every single tune, but no, I was becoming better mm-hmm. as well. No, I played the flute all my life, but it doesn't mean to say I can't become better at reading yeah, tunes. Yeah. So I was becoming better, and they were becoming more heartfelt. And we started naming tunes after people and sure. different things, and just started getting better. But the CD, so we went to some. We flew in the Amsterdam. Uh, the band told, right, we're flying to Amsterdam. You have your first day in Amsterdam. You go mad. You do whatever you want. You get on that bus the next morning at 8 o'clock. Your serious head's on. You have a couple of beers at night, and that's only because it's just too serious. And to be fair to every single one, we're 17 year olds there. And my wee boy was there doing that, but my wee boy was probably the outside having kids and, and my wedding days the, <laughs> right. the most absolutely memorial experience I've ever had doing a show on the battlefields with my kid but uh, getting on the bus next morning with three days of seriousness and then with our last day in Amsterdam mm-hmm. so we jumped on the bus at Amsterdam train station and then we went to Ten Cod Cemetery and that was our first experience so we were all I, I, was, I was nervous I'm never uh-huh. nervous in my life no so nerves are good. No, I like to be nervous for yeah, yeah. big occasions, but I'm not nervous. No things like that. But I was so so nervous, and we were walking in, and I just looked about me in the tank cut, and honestly, it's the strangest thing I've ever said. But it was it's a graveyard, but it's it's 
absolutely the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. I just walked in and I went, oh my God. And we went in and we get, Phil gave us five minutes to walk about. And we all just done our own thing and walked about and took a few things in and he got us formed up. We walked on, he told us we were walking down this wee path and up onto the cross of Remembrance. So they were going up in levels. So we'd already planned out the two boys were coming down and laying a poppy wreath. So we went up on the cross of Remembrance. Uh, the whole band played three tunes and just look, looking about and everybody was just an emotional wreck. So we played the three tunes and I had to play Amazing Grace as a solo. And see this, uh, we would be play, play Cliffy Rays, obviously. Mm -hmm. But I brought a mother work and I started playing Amazing Grace. See the sound, mate, it, it just it just pinged through, it just pinged through the air. The sun was belting. The cemetery was full of tourists uh -huh. and they all started to flock towards me and I just started tears streaming down my face. No, I'm not a scared of crying in front of uh -huh. people. I know I'm, I, I class myself as, as no, I'm a, I'm a tough uh -huh. man. I can take anything that's through at me. Sure. But I'm not a scared of show emotion. And I just started, and I looked at every, every bomb member and the tears were streaming down their face. And that, that first incident was just, I just can't explain it. It mm. was just unbelievable. It set so, the tone. Oh, it did, mate. We got off that and then a few boys, we, Stevie Sloan, he's, He's uh, the one I was telling you about. I, my tune goes uh -huh. He's one of my best mates, one of the best men I've ever met in my life. But he went away. He's very, he was very nervous. He wouldn't do it in front of anybody. But he took himself away into this sort of amphitheater thing that was in Ten Course or Ten Cut Cemetery. Mm -hmm. And I would, I had oh, most of the band had walked away the other direction. And then all I hear is this, this flute solo go, and it was John Condon playing, but it was being played really, really slow. It's why me and me and Sloaner played. I just went, what is that? And it was just, mate, again, it was just pinging through the air. And I just walked towards it, walked towards it, walked towards it. And the whole band was walking towards it, and the tourists were walking towards it. And it was him. He'd sneaked off. <laughs> he'd sneaked off to do a solo, and he'd got Wiggles right. to record him. But he didn't really want anybody uh -huh. to see him. But then he, he started seeing everybody go around him, mate. And I could see he was getting nervous. Yeah. And he finished it a bit short, but it was absolutely fantastic. Right. I have it on camera, on my iPad. But, uh, mate, it was absolutely fantastic. So from there... We went down to, I think it was a place called Baloo Cemetery, I'm not too sure, but it was where big uh, Ian McFarland's great, uh, great, great grandfather was right, buried. Okay. You call him Rifleman John Brown McFarland, and we have a tune named after him now, right. a, a belting tune where I play a wee solo at the start of it, and then a belt into the tune. We want to play it over there when we go back. So we went down there, <coughs> we started off with Killaloo, marched up to his grave, turned towards the grave, played a couple of tunes, and then I played a wee solo. I think it was Betrayal, right. played, but I played it very, very slow. And he was standing at the grave with, with his hat off, and then he led the wreath, and he got back in the bomb. I played Bloody Road to Psalm, and he belted that drum. i have never seen anybody more emotion, let out more emotion in my life. No, was, mm -hmm. These things maybe don't sound. You know, and that's what I said to my wife, I can't explain to you this trip. No. Well, because I think I, you're doing a, a good job. I wouldn't, do, I wouldn't <laughs> do it justice, no, because yeah. I, I just don't feel as if I do it justice when mm. I'm explaining it, mate, because it, it, it had a huge, huge effect on me and every single member. So we went from there down into France, um, a bit yeah. in their hotel. We uh, had a couple of couple of quiet drinks, and everybody was just... The young lads were... We had four members in the band. Most of them were young. One was Ian, who had members... or. Relatives over there, uh -huh, and sure. Phil had found the spots that they died. Plus, he'd found Phil's great grandfather's grave. The other, the other ones were spots, but they were buzzing. They were up. Them young lads were absolutely buzzing. So next day we got up at eight, and we went on an hour tour. We went to Man and Kate. We went to Ulster Tower. Uh, we went to Faithful Memorial. We went to a few trances. We went to for lunch, and in these things, I was I was playing solos and mm -hmm. nearly every one now. Sure. It was becoming second nature now. Yeah. But see, every single one, you're 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 just shaking. You're just so nervous and walking into every cemetery, mate. I just can't understand how cemeteries can look so beautiful. Yeah. Maybe it's just a just what who's there, and but they're just they're so well looked after. The flowers in them, everything about them, everything you walk into, you're just you're in awe. Mm -hmm. And going to uh, Man and Gate. We couldn't do a man and get prayed, we weren't booked in for that, so we went up the back and on the wee memorial at the back and sure. had a solo in there, played a couple of tunes, band marched in there, uh, back to the hotel again. Next day, we were on our way back up through Belgium again, back to Amsterdam, uh -huh. and we went to the finish at the List River. This was near the end of the war where the soldiers went over the river to, to, uh -huh. get, to get the sort of the rest of our group. 
and me and Sloan had played a, a wee piece we had played for years on a song where I play seconds and he plays the only song just just normal mm-hmm. um, but always wanted to play it together somewhere and we played it at Thiefel Memorial first off and then we played it at this We Less River Memorial and that finished the sort of the battlefield tour and then we went to Amsterdam and, and just let off steam. let off the steam because yeah. it was so so serious and as I say, being able to do that with my son, my son had done it before me. My son right. was in the army, so he'd been, he'd done, bef- uh-huh. he'd done it before me, and but he never experienced anything. I guess doing it with a band and it was just. I think, if, I think if, if us three went with a group and just walked around, no, it's not going to be the same. Sure, uh, but doing it with people that I'm so close to, the bond that brought mm. brought by us, you know, that bond, them nineteen people, will serve for the rest yeah. of their lives. So well, there's something about there's something about it though. What you're saying, Logan, in regards to. You're going as a collective, yep. you know, you've, you've been through thick and thin with some of these guys and you're in a place honouring people who went through thick and thin for each other as well. You yep. know, there's, and there's something about, I think, the, the, the bond and the camaraderie in the bond that whenever you combine it with some, the, the history and the heritage and regards, obviously there's a massive connection between, you know, Northern Ireland, the, the Somme, 36 Ulster Division, etc. You know, there's something that I think that, that's that's built in the the our community that connects with that yeah. in a way, and the bond scene connects that in a way that there's there's a heart to heart connection there well, that's unbelievable. We should be educated about it mm. in school, Glenn. No, it's a it's a shame. Yeah, that it took me until I was what three years ago, forty three to go there. Yeah, well, forty three before I go there. Yeah. No, if I'd have been taught about this in school, and if I'd have been taught proper history in school about country and people, mm. young boys in my country going to war, you know, yeah. that would have been there long ago and I know. even coming from sort of Clock Fern Conquer side and you know, UDA and UVF side of things you no, know, I think a lot of people think it's sort of UVF thing it's not, you know, every yeah, single no. bond, every it's single not, person no. I don't care if you're Catholic or Protestant you should be there mm. we, we were at graves where Irish soldiers had fought yeah. for the British Army that they were looked at as traitors that nobody go to but we went and put yeah. poppies on them because we were away fighting for the British Army uh-huh. no, they, went, they went against what, con- what they were being told down there and they went and fought for the British Army so we went and put poppy or poppy crosses there but it, it had such a huge effect not just on me yeah. no, from, the, from the 17 year old in my barn who was, who was young Dean at the time whose great great uncle was there yeah. it had a massive effect on him right, okay. right up to the oldest member hugely same week I'm home um, there must have been five or six thousand we had a, a wee tour. A, see the guy took us on the bus. I think his name was Johan. So along with Phil and Phil Hamilton was, you know, I, as I said, I grew up as man, and I didn't even know. No, he knew half of this stuff. Right, 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 okay. stuff. And such, I couldn't thank him enough for it. We made him an honorary member of the band when we come back. It was absolutely fantastic. What he told us was fantastic. And then when we come back, it just had such a huge effect. With five, six thousand photos and videos to go through. So we were all back and on our chat group chats where we were all putting them on and we're all I sitting in a house, no tears streaming mm-hmm. down the face at this. No, it just it, it even affects me now. No, yeah. even sitting here talking about it now, no, it's, it's making my stomach go. Sure. But for a, for a few months, I, I couldn't handle them. Right. I couldn't handle my emotion. And it just it, it took yeah. over me. And, and I was asking the boys in the band, you know, he's, oh, I was saying, no, it's it's <laughs> it's it's, a, it's had such a it had yeah. such a huge effect. So we sat sat down and when they said it, what you were saying, the CD. So, but they said the name of the CD in Flanders Fields. Yeah. And I knew if I was making a CD called that, that it needed to be something. And so <laughs> it is. I couldn't is. name a CD that and just fire out even tunes we were playing then, which were good. Mm. So I said, sat down with Ian and Sloaner. Well, I saw him and I said, we were going to read out 20 tunes. So, well, I was going to read out 20 tunes. So I read out 20 tunes. And about maybe about 10 or 11 of them were named after different spots in the song. Right. One of them was named after Big Ian's great-great-grandfather. One of them was named after wee Andrew Gallagher's uncle, soldier John Neal. Mm-hmm. So they're all, they're all connections yeah. and they were all, they were all great tunes, mate. But we spent probably about a year. So what that was probably spent a good year and that wasn't just Monday. That was no Monday, yeah. Wednesday, Thursday. Was coming to my shed. It was extra practices because there was a few wee laments before the laments before the tune. Sure. A few wee different solos that we had to practice on a separate night. Uh huh. So it was a full year of absolute practice. Now, well, the Thursday night it was a smaller practice what I had, and then the other the other main night would have been uh, maybe ten flutes, four drums, three bass drummers. All the both cymbal players have been there, and we've done this for for a year, mate. And 
just wanted to keep going and keep going and keep going until we got it absolutely right because we knew we had to had to get it right. So we got to the stage where we were either recorded and we got on to Chris. The Chris is we actually recorded a CD clatter years ago at the start. So it was okay, like but mm-hmm. loads and loads of mistakes on it, like. But uh Chris I got in contact with him, arranged to come up and record the C D in the Blues Club. And look, he came up Sunday afternoon. This was during the COVID thing. Sure. So we, we sort of kept going through COVID every Thursday night playing for Claire Holmes and out sort of every weekend around the estate. Uh so we recorded two CDs in, in this. So that first Sunday we went to record it. We thought we were gonna get it all done the one day. Like, mm-hmm. and there was thirty six tunes on it. Right. So we're actually recording about forty tunes. 40, 40, 41 tunes, and you were doing like three takes of every one. Yeah. So we, we didn't even, we got about halfway through, and, and Chris for a to me was coming back. He said he would come back the following Sunday. He was absolutely brilliant with us, like, absolutely fantastic. And I uh, came back the following Sunday. And we'll tell you, mate, there were two of the most high pressure days that you'd ever be involved in. Mm, I can and, imagine. And especially for me, you know, and I think the boys all knew, you know, right, he's going to be like this, so let's, let's just yeah. get in and get it done. and and that's due because it, I just wanted it to be to be so good. Uh, so we finally got it recorded. Me and Snowner, as as in the first CD, we go down to Chris's caravan and we go through every single track, uh, pick the best track out of the three, and then he gives us some. I take him home, make sure there's no mistakes. So we done all that, uh, and then give him it back. And I was ready to go in. Dropped it off to me, and I was I couldn't have been happier to be fair. Uh huh. No, uh, I think yeah. we, I think we're done. I think we've done them, done them credit. Like. You, were, you were saying earlier on, one of the things that you said was you weren't too sure if you could put into words the experience that you had at the song. I'd have to say that you didn't put it into words. You put it onto that CD. No, no, I, you you I, put it into every single tune that's on there because you can tell just from listening to that. The second one that you did is also good. Yep. There's something, though, that differentiates... Flanders Fields. Oh, mate, the second, the second one. You the know second I mean? one was done in my living room in eight weeks. Uh-huh. See them, them tunes on that second yeah. one? We don't play them. Right. So I, I, read, I read out, was it like 20, I think it was 20, mm. 20 orange tunes for the centenary. Uh-huh. And we'd done that in my living room in eight weeks. Boss didn't have any income for two years. Yeah, you no, needed to do something, yeah. And, and we, we don't get no help from, no yeah. from, from nobody, mate. So we done two CDs and we sold over a thousand of them in Flanders Fields. Yeah. And we sold like, 350 of, of the other one so it brought us in a huge amount of money over yeah, two years exactly so no so, you can I, tell I absolutely I'm, I'm really grateful for that comment I made because that was me I wanted to show in that CD yeah. how much that trip meant no you can't and listen there may be some people that doesn't like it no there's everybody's got an opinion and that the thing about me no I, I, I'm absolutely grateful for you saying that, but see if somebody says me don't like it, I don't care. Well, that's no. it. I'm, I'm a type of guy that it doesn't mean nothing yeah. to me. No, I'm, I'm straight, honest. I say what I, say what I have in my heart. Sometimes I'm, I say I'm too honest and uh-huh. my mouth can get me in trouble, but that's yeah. just the way I am. Well, you know what? It's one of those things. I, I, I mean, for me, being a melody man, you know, sometimes me sitting listening to a Blood and Thunder CD is... Hard you work. know, it's hard work. <laughs> so it is, you know what I mean? And Funny enough, mate, you say that. Sorry for interrupting you. <laughs> we were playing up last week in... Uh, Where is Bally Keel? Where is, no? Bally Keel. And we were playing that week solo, the John Burr McFarlane one. But see, when it comes in, it's... That's its lyric. Uh-huh. Like, and there's a couple of Shankin' Road Defenders boys sitting behind us. And when we come in, you've seen them. <laughs> well, you can just tell they're in Bally boys, like, they don't like noise, no. And I'll be honest with you, mate, I was absolutely... In love with Melody uh-huh. for about ten years, yeah, and so much time and wanting to go to a Melody band, but it just it just healed yeah. off. But for a long time, I was I was right in them. No, Mally I mean I, it's like, one of those things. I kind of you know it was like, but it's one of the the, the few Blood and Thunder CDs that I have listened to over and over and over and over again. Yep. You know what I mean? In terms of like going back to it and going, I am actually enjoying listening to this because, and I think. And I'm not, I'm not just saying that because you're here in front of me, but you can tell when somebody has put effort into something. You can tell when something's been done to a high standard. Like the other the other CD that you'll hear me talk about a lot is William King, Death or Glory. Yeah. Uh, for I, I me, yeah, when we check, see, if you're into Melody Flute, for me that is the pinnacle of recorded yeah. Melody Flute is William King's Death or Glory. There is a, not a tune on that that is not 
perfection personified. I mean, it is ridiculously good. And I was, ta- I remember talking with the guys from the William King about the process that they went through. That, but like you said, you just went through like a year of preparation yeah. before you recorded it. You just put the time and the effort in. They did it, something similar. They did they took, got off? Did they come back from it? No, they, they didn't. I think they just they it was something they were looking to do. You know, really? was was about you know let's create a really good CD. Well, Phil Hamilton took him to about uh-huh. as well. And yeah. Some of the clips they put up, man. See the one of them standing at the Thief Memorial uh-huh. down the steps. Oh, yeah, yeah. Playing. Oh, it's Helen Cathedral or something uh, they're playing. Absolutely. It's ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they came, they are our bomb parade. Yeah. So but I did a couple of years ago. Walt Brown Roth killed me at the Brilliant bomb. Really absolutely fantastic bomb. But you want to hear, there's a there's a tune on there, and I always talk about this to our parents. I remember saying this to one of the guys in the bomb, I think, one. They played this tune called The Florentine. And for me, it's one of the best marches ever written. Yep. And whenever my daughter was born, she had a, a bit of a sleeping problem. Right. The only thing that she, that I could play that would make her go to sleep, it's not because the tune's bad. I like to think it's because the tune's amazing and it just kind of, it, it made her go to sleep. It that's, was the Florentiner. It was the Florentiner. Well, maybe you go to see it. Maybe you to say, see, Smith McGuinness syndrome, only 600 kids in the world have it. Mm-hmm. So it's very rare. It's chromosome 17 is half of it's missing. Right. And to be fair, I know I can't get much information off doctors or because they don't sure. really know anything about mm-hmm. it. There's one doctor in, in the country I can deal with. But she, her... The bond, she's the most important thing in her life is the bond. Right. The most important days of the year are the twelfth and our bond parade. And she's got this days now where she's starting to go on a few more parades. Right, okay. And we're getting a new uniform, I'm getting her measured for a new uniform. Oh, but right, there we go. There's not much for her in society, mate, but see my bond. No there's there's people that would be close to her, even people in, in the outside family wouldn't see her or wouldn't have much time. Sure. They wouldn't have much time and just don't bother. But see my bond, my bond showed my daughter the the absolute amount of time you will I could ever ask for, honestly, mate. And she just loves him. Uh-huh. There's not very many places I could go and just leave leave my daughter in and walk out. I just wouldn't do it because mm-hmm. no, it's just me. It's just the way I am here. But I would walk in and leave her. But any of my bomb members, if the whole bomb was in a room, I'd just leave her in there. And she absolutely adores the bomb, mate. When she was young, she she's severe sleep disturbance. Mm-hmm. So she had the same bonds on. So never went to sleep. Yeah, but, no, <laughs> but it, it would have kept her. Calm, calm it things it down, you know. Yeah, okay, and, and it would have calmed her mind a bit. No, but, but it is one of the. I think you know that you know the the idea of recording something, and, but doing something. It's almost like you know sometimes <clears throat> bonds hit touch on something. Yeah, uh, or they have an experience and it marries together with the music, and it's almost like you create. You know why they talk about the Beatles. And Sergeant Pepper almost being like the culmination of their sort of creative, you know, this is them at their creative peak. It's I, and it's there's bands that have done that with their CDs here, but you can tell that they've hit this real creative streak, yep. and it's come out on their CD. Well, that was from the battlefields. It's it's you need inspiration. No, as I say, you get inspiration. Somebody one of our band members say they've lost a family member. They asked me to read a tune out after them. That's inspiration. Yeah, that makes me mm. want to read a good tune. But coming back from there, I'll repeat myself again. The effect it had on her was was unexplainable. Yeah. And not just for me. Yeah. Every single person that was there, all 19 of us. And I think there might be a couple of members that aren't in the bonds from that 19. Right, okay. But see the bond still that that 19 yeah. people have from that trip. That sure. I'll, never, ever, I'll never forget that till the day I die. Sure. And that was the only reason that I was able to go on and with the help of everybody that helped me and make that CD and write them tunes out and put the drum on too and it just was just basically from there mm-hmm. but after after the CD the following year we started playing them tunes on the road then so and that yeah we were going like that like that but we just sort of took a big the new uniform no matter what we have been going through seeing we put on a uniform on our back it gives us a, a playing ways yeah. for whatever reason I don't know mate it just gives us a, an extra couple of steps and when we got that turquoise uniform, we just Aye. shot off. But them tunes, playing them the following year, was the best tunes we'd ever played. It was the best we'd ever been in the road. As I say, the 10th year was the best year for all round, everything to do with mm-hmm. the band. But playing ways, this year and last year, we've got better and better again. Yeah. And it's just all to do with hard, hard work. Yeah. And listen, I know I can be a melt. I'm not one of these people that walk around <laughs> thing and I don't melt their heads. I melt their heads and probably every week. Uh-huh. No, and I, I admit that. But I think they let me do that because they know that every single thing I do is for the bond mm-hmm. and them. And they know that outside the bond, if they're ever in trouble, 
I'm the first person to be there to help him. Yeah. So the take my my if you want to call, I don't know what to call. It. Don't <laughs> mean this or whatever. Or or <laughs> <laughs> so no, that's that's just the way it is. No, uh, the same much I put in, and the same much Sam puts in, the same much Willie put in, and they just folly is no. Yeah. They, they're basically folly is, and that's the best thing. They never mm-hmm. question what we do. They just they know that we're making the decisions yeah. for the band, so they'll not they know. Whatever decision they make is right because we're making it for the good of the band. Sure. So we'll just follow it. And that's the way it's been. And from that, you no, know, it's maybe four years now. It's just been going so, 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 so yeah. well, mate. I know. You can tell though, even when you're on parades and stuff, you can you know when you guys are you know when you guys are coming. There is you you know like there's certain bonds up here on the road and you may not see them, but yeah. you hear them and you know who it is. Yeah. Well you we know? seem to have a good following up North Antrim way. You know, I always read great comments from up, up Roy's direction and uh, every prayer we go to up there, we we'll get absolutely yeah. brilliantly well. I tell so you where you just went, mate. I thought you were outstanding. The night was downshire, so that you just, the downshire produce were a bomb. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. So yeah. you were, I thought you were fantastic. You could hear you off. Yeah. Roy was doing the stream, and we could, you could hear you off camera. You are well, you not hear you. We could, you, you were hearing you in the distance, yeah. and there was bonds walking past, and in the back, it's like going, Who's that in the background? It was like the comments were like, It's Rothcoon, Rothcoon, Rothcoon. I don't know, but no, we're playing, <laughs> we're playing no man's land, right? It's a real, real, real high pitch one, uh-huh. and but well, we're actually. A good 20, 30 yards away, maybe even mm. more. And you could hear it. He, he was pointing at a ball that was in That's front true. of him. Uh-huh. And we were up and down. I could hear it, mate. That, that was actually some sounds who it was. Yeah, I actually taxed him what it was. <laughs> Big fella, Glenn Main. It was, I think it may have been his first proper night on the bass drum. Right. It was him on the bass drum. Okay. And I taxed him after it and I sent him it. And I said, listen, you can't see us. But have a listen you to that because you're on yeah. the bass drum and for a pity you're going very, very well. Brilliant. So, yeah. so what's the future for Rothkull, Paris and Boys? You've already kind of teased us a wee bit there with new uniform. You're obviously not going to tell us too much about that other than no, it's well, new. No, we're definitely getting a new uniform. So in the last sort of, even the last sort of few months, mate, we've, we've gained more members. So yeah. we've got a couple of people from Ballymena. We've got a wee lad from Suffolk. We've got a wee lad, young lad from the Bully Boys. Right, we okay. We've 16. Uh, he's only 16. Great, great wee footer. So we've, we're making good strides this year again. Mm-hmm. We've learned. I think we've got four tunes that we didn't put on the road last year. We already learned. And okay. 13. So we've about, we'll have about 17 new tunes. Uh, as I say, with no aspirations, we never have any targets. We always sit down and talk about you know, how the yeah. band's going. But sure. we never say we want to be there, we want to be there. Uh-huh. Well, we're definitely getting a new uniform. We plan to be going to London right. for the Song Association parade okay, at the end of the brilliant. year. It's funny enough, I was just last night watching Drummer Eagles in London, the, the big long clip, yeah. 50 minute clip. Uh, absolutely fantastic. Crazy, yeah. Last six minutes of it, they were tapping for some reason, yeah. but the first 40 minutes I thought was burning. And I'd like to see that Drummer Eagles band over here with that band that season. Uh, they were, I know, they were I know. Because not well, very often I would. I would well, say that's it. it. Well, and they're, they're definitely, I think Drummer Eagles are again. If you were asking me about, you know, I was about three bands that have developed so much over the last lot of years in the bond, in the bond scene. One's yourselves. Um, for me, Danaki. Yeah. Oh my god. Uh, Danaki are an amazing bond. And Drummer Higgles yeah, are the drummer Higgles, sometimes I see them are absolutely fantastic. Man. Absolutely fantastic. So tight, you know, and you can you can tell that there's effort being put yeah. in there. And even Danaki, I mean I was talking with one of the guys from Danaki recently and uh, I'd said to him, listen, you know, what what's been going on with your bond? Is you know you think what do you mean? I says because you have went to another you have went to another level, you know, and you can tell people that are putting the effort in. It's amazing to watch, but uh, yeah, no, with no with no aspirations, mate, with no targets. All we want to do is keep the bond the way it is, yeah, and and build. No, we don't we don't really want. I think we sort of said a couple weeks ago to close the books because we're up near twenty right, okay. fifteen so drums and we don't have enough, enough yeah. instruments, right. So we've, we've, we've only like 13 drums and 15 drummers at the minute, so right. we uh, we don't need to take in any more members because we don't have instruments for them. We just want to keep the atmosphere the way it is. We want to keep building what we've built on in the last four years and in the last 12 years. And the things I've learned in this band for myself, mm-hmm. you know, having to deal with different people, learn that through football as well, like, but in the band, way more. Because you know, everybody can't get shit at that. People need an arm around them. Yeah, yeah. You know, I've learned over the years you now I have to deal with certain situations sure. in different ways. You no, know, before I was in this band, and I've had a situation that I've had just tear on, mm. shooting. And you no, know, this this in this band that's made me because you care about the people. Um, and when I say I care about the people, I care about them passionately. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're a family to me, and I hope they think the same about me. And 
I would, I would like to think, to think the same about me yeah. because you know they know I'll be here for them, even if even if they're not in the band. Yeah. No, unless they fall out with somebody and they're away <laughs> and then they're, they're leaving, they're leaving and they don't see them again. Sure. But, you know, they say they say having my son there. No, he's been there from day one. All the young lads are from eleven years of age. It's it's built and they're all in their twenties, th- twenty three yeah. now. Some of them have kids. Sure. Some of them have kids now. So I've watched these wee lads. The way the older members in the CYC mm. and my watch me. Yeah. So it was full circle for me. I, I spent my young days learning, learning off people above me. And now the same got people things doing happening the same thing with, for you. with me. So yeah. no, I've I've gone full circle and no I've as I said the the whole way through this, nothing means more to me than than this band and band, the band scene in general, no, it's just yeah. it's my life, no. Some yeah. people say have, it's part time for them. The uh I don't like going full whack at it. Why well, do? No, it's my release. I don't drink. I haven't drunk in fifteen years. And as I say, of of a, a tough life in the house, my wee girls are, are behaviour is very challenging. Me and me and the, my wife do, and my son do. But you know, the bonds are released for me, and it's I just love it. What, love it. One of the things I usually ask people at the end of, of a podcast that uh, uh, is is what have you got from the bonds? And I don't even know what I need to even ask you that because the last. I think, I think young kids, I think we need to teach young kids more what they can mm. learn from a band scene because, you no, know, there's not very many young kids getting involved in our bands or our orange lodges and, you no, know, if there's not, it yeah. happens in an hour 20, sure. 20 30 yeah. years. And I, know, and you have to get them motivated. I know, and it's something that goes back to something that you've talked about though, and it's interesting that your conversation that we've had almost echoes a wee bit of a conversation I had with a guy from the, the US Old Guard, yeah. um, a guy, uh, Sergeant Major Mark Reilly, and they were going through, the Fife and Drum scene in America is going through a real kind of tough time, and they are looking at how do they sustain you know, this tradition, you know, this is like obviously there's hundreds of years of stuff going on, yeah. like ways or shells. And he came up with this three things that he thought that would really help them try and sustain their their scene. And you've mentioned them tonight as well. Maybe not in the same words, but you've definitely mentioned it. One of the ways we say is getting people committed to being musically excellent. Yeah. Be the best that you can be. That doesn't mean that you're like grade eight at whatever else, but you're the best that you can be. Uh, where you are you in terms of that. You only get out yeah. what you put in, Glenn. Exactly. I have my stepbrother, sorry for interrupting you. No, you're okay. My stepbrother who came to our band who never lifted a flute in his life. Wasn't mm-hmm. even interested in the band. Wasn't even interested in bonds. No, his, his, his dad married my mum 15 years ago. So we'd only been coming come into my life then. Uh-huh. And he, he just texted me one day, can I join the band? I just went, what? <laughs> you join the band? <laughs> I said, Did you never spoke to me about bonds in your life? She said, I want to come up. I said, oh, you're more model, come on up. So I told him, no, I learned learn him a scale, I learned him how to blow a flute, but after that, it's down to you. Yeah, yeah, that's it's, right. It's all it's what you. you put in. Yeah. And every single one of my members know that. I've had our members that haven't lifted the flute and see, nah. No, they're, they're playing all these tunes. Every tune I bring, from maybe about four years ago, because it started getting a bit more complicated, mm-hmm. every tune I bring, 90% of the footers, we're never playing that. <laughs> I'm being serious, mate. Every one I bring, and yeah. a couple of guys in particular, they're they're more they're more <laughs> brothers, so they are. But every time I bring one, yeah. we're not playing that. And what happens two weeks down the lane? They're playing it because they put the effort in to play it. Yeah. It's the same as anything, yeah. any instrument. If I want to play a piano, no, I know the way I am. No, I, I, I don't commit to many things nowadays because because of my wee girl and stuff. But see, when I commit to something, I'm all in. You're all in. No, yeah. If I commit to learn the piano, I guarantee you in a couple of months I've got it learned. Mm-hmm. No, it's it's all what you put in. Sure. If you want to come to practice, not really put an effort in, then go home, throw your flute on the floor, and don't lift it up again until the following yeah. following Monday, and then you're you're not going to not going to progress. No, you're that's it. Get it. Oh, you're right. <laughs> the second thing that he said was he says about know your history and your heritage. Yep. And it is obviously they've got a whole <laughs> link to where their music has come from in terms of you know, obviously well, that's civil war and everything that's like that. We you know, on, mate. we we don't teach our kids yeah. our, our culture and how the no. bonds of a real. I think that you know we look forward in schools, but I think there's a real place for bonds to to, to make that kind of connection. Just so let's bring people in and let's get you connected. Oh, with I'll your teach history. them about all. all look yes. at the way course me and you were on. Yeah, yeah. I took like four of my young band members. The one you came on, you'd done a burnout talk on, you, you'd put a burnout show on for us. Uh, but we went on that for 10 weeks. Uh-huh. And see, at the start, I was a wee bit apprehensive about it. I was a mentor, me and Sam were a mentor for the four boys, and there was like a ha- half from Antrim, half from down here. That's right, yeah. It was fantastic. Yeah. It was fantastic. There was a couple of wee trips 
arranged. They went to the song. That's right. Yeah. I, t- I, I remember I spoke to you about yeah. it. I couldn't go because of the uh, vaccination things. Or sure. The, the, Restrictions, but they went and I was talking to them on Sunday. I remember Sunday, I uh-huh. said that they're burning 10, yeah. but that course was burning. And when we love my bomb with Hector, we Andrew Gallagher, he's his family's rich in, in, in the orange, and so's he, right? He's a, he's a young master in the orange. Uh-huh. And I knew if I brought him, they're looking for the next Protestant councillor, yeah. or unionist councillor, or, or leaders of some community form, groups yeah. or stuff like that. It was a single identity course, so it wasn't cross community. And I knew if I took there was another couple of boys who knew might be. But I knew this way, lad, would. Uh-huh. And see, I brought him. He never shut up. And that's what I wanted. Yeah. I said to him before I went in, I said, see me go in here. He says, you make sure you see my same way you are when you are with me. You speak. And he did. And it had an effect. Because yeah. he got an invite to a conference that was happening. And a couple of talkers asked his name and brought him up. And he started getting involved in a couple of other things. Brilliant. And that's that's what you need. Yeah. And we need that about bonds as well. Because... No, in 20, 30 years of having got young people in bonds now, there's not going to be any. Yeah, exactly. Especially in the Orange Lodge, because the Orange, no, there is a, a lot of younger members in bonds, let's be honest, yeah. but in the Orange Order, I don't think there's a lot of younger yeah. members. So we need, to, we need to teach our own culture and history. You're yeah, 100% completely. right. And you know. bonds, mate, no, bonds has kept the young kids in my, in my bond away from drugs and away from... And yeah, listen, I, I've, I've got wind of a couple of young kids, as I say, because I've had them from the world so uh-huh. I've seen them go through the alcohol, the drugs, the, yeah. them bumping into different people, and I, I got a wind of a couple of them were taken, and I went to the, the mums and dads, and I told them, I'll clip my ears them, so I was letting them know, huh. and I did, I went to the wee lads, and done everything I could to, to get them away from it, and keep them away from it, the wee lads in my band that have had problems with mental health, have went to their, their, their houses, sat one for hours, sat with their parents, this is, no, this is what, this yeah. is the kind of thing This is what we need, isn't it? So I think, Young, young, young generation nowadays, and I don't mean to be cheeky or disrespectful. Not as tough as we were. I, I just don't think they are. We were brought up. We were brought up different. Differently, and we yeah. were, we, we were no deal with it. Yeah, no, get see, on with it. Just get on with it. see me, and my two brothers. No, we. My mum worked on the clock at the weekend, working the standard during the week. My uh-huh. dad was a bricklayer at the weekend or during the week, and working the clock bench at the weekend. No, for me, we're, we're young enough. No, you are big enough to look after yourselves. Three brothers. Once my big brother was 14, 15, it was us. We looked after yeah. ourselves, you know what I mean? No, I just don't think it's, it's like that. I know. Is it? It's crazy. Like, you know. the, and then the third thing that he said was, that will help me, he says, is being able to give back. Being able to give something back to your community. And that's one of the things that I've been really keen to bring out with, you know, the amount of charity work and being able to do something to give, to give back to people. You, you've mentioned that a couple of times tonight yeah. as well. Well, and absolutely. He, you know, know, during, the, during the COVID, we tried to uh, do that massively along with CYC. Uh, we joined a gallery and played in the park. Something you know, like it's where our relationship wouldn't have been great at the start, mm-hmm. but it's great now. And we played in the big park together. We went to nursing homes together. We, we collected stuff in nursing yeah. homes together. We raised money for charity. Deliveries around the doors Deliveries and all that kind of stuff, and, yeah. No, that was great. And... In a, in, a, in a bigger perspective, talking about bonds giving back, I think it probably Quinn gave me a phone call one night, and I didn't have a matter. She put something on Facebook that I wasn't happy with, and I got in touch with Roy, and <laughs> I ended up having a, a conversation with her, and it lasted like an hour and 48 minutes on the phone. Right. The first wee bit was me saying to her, and then her explaining, uh, what a woman, like, no, the amount of work she does, and at, at the end of the phone call, my perception of her was absolutely completely and utterly different than it was at the start. I learned what she does, learned the amount of work she puts in. They're the type of people we need. The woman Wendy, that, that was on that course, you, mm-hmm. these guys, these are the type of the people we need to, to be getting it out there and teaching yeah. the young kids, you know what I mean? Yeah, no, definitely. So there's a, there's a lot of positives out there in regards to the bonds and stuff. And I think anybody listening in on this is going to pick up on your passion. They're going to pick up on what you've got out of this. They're going to pick up on how you look after people in your bond, what you're giving the young people in your community and how you're helping people out and stuff. And I don't think, you know, that anybody could have anything negative to, to say about that one. you know? Ren or bonds, and you see the same thing. Like when you yeah. see, as I said earlier, every bond's every bond's uh, different, but you no, know, they're all they're all like families. You no, know, in different ways. You no, know, some may yeah. want to put that much amount of time into learning music, sure, but they put that much of time into having fun and, and promoting their culture. And that's why I say to every single one of my members, never, ever, ever disrespect any single bond in a row. I heard one of them laugh, and he was only a young nipper, uh-huh. and it was a brief few years ago laughing out now we accord him one night, and I pulled him to say, and I said, never do that again. I said, never, ever do that again. Yeah. I said, you respect every single bond that's on this road, no matter whether they're big, no yeah. matter whether they're small, 
no matter whether there's girls in them or they're brilliant to play or well, they're, they're not very so good at playing, yeah. you respect them all. Yeah. And I teach that to the kids and I try to teach the, the young ones my band that have done for years to not go on Facebook and talk crap. Mm. You know, rivalries on Facebook can sometimes, or rivalries between bands can sometimes between some things somebody said on Facebook, then it gets out on their own. So yeah. I try, I, a couple of my band members to be fair have done it before and uh-huh. I've pulled them straight away. You know, they've maybe, they've maybe won a trophy and put on no smart comments. I said, just be humble. No, no, you don't need to put that on. Just accept, just accept the awards and carry on. Yeah, yeah. You don't need to go on and say something stupid like champions or anything like that. No. So we'll try to teach them stay away from social media and just be be respectful. Yeah. No. There's enough. So there's enough knaves out for the pawns. You know, oh, they're absolutely. They're turning even, them listen, on ourselves. Not not just not just from from the Catholic side. Yeah. From, from our own side. side. Yeah. You know, I've heard man, many Protestants say we're a bunch of thugs. You know what I mean? No, we'll do this, we'll do that. They, they're having a clue. Yeah, that's they're having it. a clue. We spend our year traveling this country, going to people, going to places where you don't even see a blue bag, and you see families just watching a bomb parade yeah. and burning atmospheres. Yeah, that's you know it. what I mean? And you don't hear a sectarian word, you don't hear a sectarian song. Yeah. And people have just the, the wrong perception. Yeah, exactly. But I think, sort of, in, in the last few years, they're starting to see it. Because you've got people like Roy, you've people like Neil and Lane, you've people like Richard and Michelle, people like Lisa and Fletch, ah, oh, many more, Aero Pro that are out promoting the band scene in a great light. Mm-hmm. And you never see that on their cameras. Yeah. You don't see it. Yeah. You see good atmospheres, you see good parades. No, you see people on, on their lives watching from Canada, watching from America, watching from New Zealand. That's amazing. Yeah. You know what I mean? But we're, we're starting to get that now. And to me personally and my band and all the members, I'd like to thank you all because you do an absolutely fantastic job. And me being able to come home after every parade and watch my band and every other band, that's my whole weekend. My whole life is spent in band. I don't watch TV. Yeah. And my whole my whole time, when, when I get my week or so at night, spent watching them, you know, doing uh-huh. bands, doing band things. And I, I thank you all from the bottom of my heart because we didn't have that years ago. Yeah. You know what I mean? We'll have it now and you're promoting the band scene in a, in a far more positive way. You doing this, tell us the people's stories, promoting it in a far more... I don't know why I told her couple of crazy stories about the <laughs> conquerors earlier on but yeah. no, that's just but the, the thing is that the majority of stuff that we've talked about tonight has been around how we've developed as a bond how yeah. we've got better what do we do to get better how do we you know maintain what we're doing and that has been our, and the, the drive and the focus the connection with your history the connection with your heritage all those kind of things there if people want to miss that for a couple of the other bits and pieces then that's they're missing the point completely life isn't perfect Humans aren't perfect, things happen, but in the whole, I think 90%, 99% of what happens in the bond scene is an extremely positive thing. Yep. All right, man, you know, so... Oh, absolutely, mate, and I couldn't agree with you more. It's, it's been, what, 40, 40 years, 41 years of... Wouldn't change a thing, but it's absolute amazement, and I've had, to say, three different bonds, three entirely different bonds the entirely different thought processes when I was in them bonds, the entirely different learning processes when I was in mm-hmm. them bonds, and doing a full circle, then I being the senior person in the bond, looking after the younger ones, and were the people I looked up to back in my day, like I said to you, Dodo, Joe Wingley's, Jack and McRae, in the, in the CYC, I hope young ones look up to me like that now, and, and even more so, because you no, know, them boys were scurry, mm. back then, and you, you, they were... You didn't really want to want to approach them at times, no. Uh-huh. We're not, I'm not, it's not like that, no. We're we're, we're a family, no. They they approach me like like I'm their father, and I approach like I'm like I'm their kids. And as I said, Haley Crawford, she's she's like a, a wee daughter to me. So these are all relationships you've you've built in the yeah. van. And my my wife would be the same. My wee girl has a, a real big fascination with phones, right? And she uh, phones people all the time, mate, and it's just constant. And listen. I can't tell her to stop. If I tell her to stop, it will cause me to the house. But most of the people that which is phoning, there's a, there's a few around the area, girls that my wife would or something would new answer to her all the time. But there's brave lot of people would answer and just no ignore her. But every single member of my band always, always has time for her. And you can see it in her because she loves them people more than most. You know what I mean? She's got her nannies and then she's got her mummy and her daddy. But outside that, you no. Know, she loves them and her granddad, obviously, but she's got out that outside that she's got she loves them people more than anybody else in the world because they treat her like gold. 
Jeg har absolut ikke tvivlet, at jeg er god, part of the så so oh, that note, man, I think that's a really class place that the 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 end. That one, no, I, I just want to say, listen, thank you so I much you, for man, coming really in. Really enjoyed sitting here, chap. You know, me, and, and absolutely, definitely, man, and definitely one of the bands that I've been looking forward to getting on the podcast, mate. And I know at the start when we had a conversation about this, you're a wee bit dubious. I know because you know, <laughs> people may think I'm a, I'm a, I'm a hater or, or a shoot, but I'm, I'm private and I'm uh-huh. shy, and people may not believe uh-huh. that, I'm, that I'm a bit shy, but I don't have. I've maybe one or two friends. I'd say my bottom maybe one or two friends. My circle is very small. Uh-huh. I don't bother many people. I say don't go to uh-huh. bars, don't drink. So I am a, a, a private person. So uh-huh. doing this, I was a wee bit dubious, but I absolutely made loved it. No, brilliant. Enjoyed sitting here talking through my whole band life. I've never done it before. Yeah. So going through all these memories. No, it almost feels like I should be haunting your red book. <laughs> 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 no, I said used to sit and watch out with my dad. So I don't know. I mean, no, but seriously, mate, thanks. And as I said again. Thanks to Roy, thanks to all all them people, Richard, Michelle, uh, Roy's Michelle, Lisa and Flats, Ali Prod, you for doing what you're doing, and just keep doing it. Brilliant, man. Thank you. Thank you very much. You have been listening to the Made to Parade podcast, sponsored by the British Drum Company, where Phantom, Regimental Series and Axial Parade Drums are hand-built in the UK to look amazing, sound amazing and feel amazing.